Welcome, everyone, to our annual Preservation Awards. Um, the, uh, it's very exciting to see such a full house here tonight. Um, we in Montclair take an, uh, preservation seriously, especially the people that sit on this commission. And I would just like to thank them. It's, uh, as a public servant, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of time, and really uh, a lot of um, knowledge and love for this town that we call, this wonderful town we call Montclair. And tonight we just had a presentation from the State Historic Preservation Commission Office, the CLG, which is what we are, Certified Local Government. Lindsay in the back who is sitting there just gave us an hour uh, review on uh, what it means preservation in terms of local, state, and national. So preservation just goes way beyond Montclair. It really embraces, you know, a much wider view. But in Montclair, we have a microcosm of everything that goes on in our great country. And it's wonderful tonight to be able to nominate or, or enable to talk about the nominations that we have considered and talked about and studied. And tonight we have the three nominations that um, we are going to present. The first one is to Miss Betty Holloway for the Preservationist of the Year. But just sit, just sit there. Don't get up yet. I'm just going to announce them, and then we'll just speak a little bit more. Um, for Preservation Service of the Year, we have the Howe House, uh, Friends of the Howe House. And then for a Bricks and Mortars Award, we have 56 Park Street, which is known as the uh, Conley Building. Um, it started life in, 19, in 1898. Uh, as a private residence and then has come now full circle, a wonderful case of adaptive reuse. So I just want to say a few words about preservation and how uh, Monc at Montclair is really such a diverse town and we so appreciate everything that happens here and it's great to see, you know, people banding together to work together, which is really the great thing here, working together to promote pieces of our history that are reflected in buildings. <laughs> what more can we say? So I'm going to introduce my fellow commission member, Mike Graham, who is going to speak about, to Miss Betty Holloway and also about the Friends of the Howe House. Thank you. Good evening, good evening everybody. Um, it's an honor to uh, present this award to Ms. Holloway. I wanted to read the Montclair History Center's nomination. Um, it, I think it is uh, very powerful and worth reading into the record. Um, it states, with fondness and respect, the Montclair History Center nominates Betty Holloway for the 2023 Preservationist of the Year Award. Betty has researched, documented, and shared numerous facets of Montclair's African American history over many years. This year, her work has focused on the history and legacy of former enslaved person James Howe and the James Howe House at 369 Claremont Avenue. Betty is a member of the Board of Friends of the Howe House. With passion and diligence, this group overcame daunting challenges to purchase the Howe House and property and begin their mission to convert it into a monument to an archive of local and national African-American history. Working individually and as part of the Friends of the Howe House Research Committee, Betty has extensively researched the history of the James Howe House to understand the changes of ownership and development of the property. She has also conducted research into the James Howe family, delving into census genealogy and property records for James, his wife Susan, and their children, James Henry Howe and Mary Oliver. Betty continues to uncover resources and documentation to better understand the Howe family and their relationship to the property at 369 Claremont. In addition to her work in, on the research committee of the Friends of the Howe House, she has researched her own family genealogy and worked with the Montclair African American Genealogy Group, as well as the St. Mark's United Methodist Church Archives Project, extensively researched Alice Hu Foster, the groundbreaking founder of Montclair's w YWCA and her family. Through exacting research, Betty uncovered the story of this entrepreneurial family which moved to Montclair from Virginia in 1874 during the Great Migration and owned several successful businesses, including a news dealer business on Bloomfield Avenue. In 2017, Betty Holloway and Barbara Sanders Harris published a historical document called the St. Mark's UMC Church History and Art. In 2019, with the Montclair African American Heritage Foundation, Betty conducted a historical trolley tour of the African American community in Montclair. This body of work is notable for shedding light onto the accomplishments and impact of the black community in Montclair. 
We consider Betty's work, including her uh, persistence to uncover difficult to find information, commitment to evidence-based research, excellent writing and engaging and informative communication of her findings worthy of individual spotlight and recognition as preservationist of the year. So thank you, Ms. Holloway. Congratulations, and we'd like to... There are two uh, people who have worked with me closely on a couple of projects that I'm especially proud of, and that's Wee Tom McPherson and Mr. Ani Struther, who is an artist. Uh, when we got together to do the uh, trolley tour, that was really an exciting tour, and I was really pleased to learn all that I did learn about groundbreaking both local and national uh, influencers who lived right here in, in Montclair. Um, Is that written? Do you have a written document? Well, we, um, we do have the tour and it's written and we share the tour with the Montclair History Center, oh, their okay. hometown history. Yes. yes, so ours is very similar um, to that one. And uh, just working with the Montclair African American Heritage Foundation has been uh, a great joy of, of mine, and uh, I appreciate their support. And uh, the working with the Howe House, the Howe House was a part of our tour. And, um, you know, we've known about the Howe House, and once we got involved with this uh, hurricane of a group, it's, it just... You know, things started and they haven't stopped. You know, it's uh, just finding out about the Howe family and uh, their legacy here in Montclair and the legacy that they leave for all of the community and uh, their contributions. Uh, also, finding out that information is, um, is really difficult, right, research team? It's, it's it's difficult, but we keep plowing our way through um, all of the data that we can find. And um, I just, you know, I love Montclair because Montclair is just so rich in history. And, um, you know, not just the people, but the architecture and and all of that. And so I just thank everyone. I thank Renee Baskerville for her support and Catherine uh, and her historic life and legacy here in Montclair. Um, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. And thank you for this honor. I thank the Montclair History Center for nominating me. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. It's an honor, Ms. Holloway. Thank you again. Oh, and speaking of a hurricane of a, of a group, uh, we'd also like to present this next award to the Friends of the Howe House. The uh, Montclair History Center had this to say in their nomination. The importance of the James Howe House has been brought into focus more than ever this past year through the grassroots efforts of the Friends of the Howe House organization. With passion and diligence, this group overcame daunting challenge challenges to purchase the home and property. Now they are on their way to creating a monument to an archive of local and national African American history and a place to further the contemporary needs of racial justice. It is the Montclair History Center's pleasure to nominate the Friends of the Howe House organization for a 2023 service award. 
Well, those on the Montclair Township Historic Preservation Commission may be aware of the history of the small clapboard home at 369 Claremont Avenue, built circa 1780, as well as, as its significance as the home of James Howe, the first freed enslaved person in Montclair. Many in our community are unaware of this important site. Given the swiftness with which the Friends of the Howe House has mustered to purchase the home when it became available in 2022, as well as the awareness they have already raised about the home, its importance, and their plans and vision for it, we believe that this important site will not only be known locally, but far wider as their plans evolve. As summarized from the Friends of the Howe House website, the home is significant in part, significant in part because one of the oldest structures in Montclair dating to the Revolutionary Era, this house helps tell the story of freedom and slavery, the development of a black community, and also the founding of Montclair as a town. James Howe worked as an enslaved man for Major Nathaniel Crane in the early 1800s. After over a decade of servitude, Crane manumitted Howe, ending his enslavement. In his 1831 testament and last will, Crane left Howe at the house $400 and approximately six acres of land. Howe used the home and the property to support his family, and there is evidence to, to suggest that a small black community developed around the James Howe house. We believe the Friends of the Howe house is very deserving of the 2023 HBC Service Award, and we thank you for considering it, and we are honored to uh, award the service award to the Friends of the Howe house. Congratulations. So I was just saying, I think Ms. Holloway just created our new tagline, <laughs> a hurricane of a group. But, um, and that's really what it was to take us to get to owning the James Howe House. Um, I do want to give a lot of thanks to the other participating organizations that made us who we are today, the NAACP, Montclair African American Heritage Foundation, the UU Church. You guys were all a big part of bringing us together um, and we took like little pieces of people from each one of those organizations to create who we are today as the Friends of the Howe House. Um, it was fast, it was hard work, and it's still continuing. Um, we welcome everybody to join the efforts. We wanna thank the Historic Preservation Committee for, nom uh, for awarding us and Montclair History Center for nominating us. It's an honor to be recognized for our work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is what's so great about Montclair. We go, we have such a diverse selection of architecture, from residential to commercial, from 18th century clabbered to a grand 19th century Victorian. So this is the William H. Conley and Company building at 56 Park Street. Um, this grand Queen Anne Victorian sits at the corner of Claremont and Park, designed in 1890 by Paul Bochier, a prominent 19th century Newark architect, for the Philadelphia businessman Frederick Drauscher and family. It was published in Scientific American Building Edition in this March 1897 uh, edition. 
and now serves as the headquarters for William H. Conley & Company, a full-service insurance broker established in 1950 and a member of the Hill Group since 2020. Um, and I know that before it became the Conley Building, I learned last time it was the Moriarty Funeral Home, which I thought was really interesting. Um, not, which one? I thought it was Moriarty. Okay. <laughs> well, scratch that. <laughs> it was. <laughs> we learned that at the last meeting. Okay. So um, it is an ex excellent example of the Queen Anne style exhibiting classical details such as asymmetrical facade with projecting dormers, dominant turrets containing rounded glass windows, a porte cochere, dental moldings, and a brownstone foundation, and the first floor elevation was clabbered on the second floor, decorative sh shingles in the gable ends. Over time, many of these el exterior elements started to show their age and deteriorate. Bill Conley, who recently passed away, started the restoration program for the exterior, which included repairing the Yankee gutters, restoring the rounded glass windows in both turrets, stabilizing the brownstone foundation, and replacing the poor cochere columns and additional carpentry work. Um, it also, Mikado painting aided in additional carpentry work and started to paint portions of the exterior, which I think is ongoing. Additional painting will be concluded during the summer months. The former residence, now containing offices for a thriving com company, has reigned on this prominent corner for the past 133 years. We are fortunate that the Conley family has undertaken the formidable task of restoring the exterior with such dedication and an eye to the original spirit of the building. And we also like to use this as an example for other people that have taken on, you know, these projects of restoration that, um, you can always contact us at the HPC. Uh, I know that th this particular project didn't need any help. They were able to do it on their own. And I think it's, it's really a testament to the family, and I appreciate it very much. So we have members of the family here that uh, Bill's son, James, and Bill's uh, sister, Noreen. Uh, if you could come up, please. Is Mikado here, do you know, the painter? He's, he's not. Okay, no, all right. Yeah. So congratulations. First of all, uh, congratulations, Ms. Holloway, and, uh, oh, sorry, oh, thank you. <laughs> Haven't, not too much experience with this, but, and, and friends of the Howe House, um, this is a very small project uh, by comparison, but it, um, it's, uh, it, it's, it is very meaningful to have the commission just recognize the work, and um, it just, it, it means a lot, we tried, um, to do a good job and to know that, that you approve of it and uh, appreciate it is uh, definitely means a lot. Say so that on behalf of uh, the whole family, um, especially my mom, who uh, uh, put in uh, the most sort of time and uh, effort on that project after my dad passed and uh, did, you know, wanted to do a, a good job to, uh, on the building that, uh, you know, kind of had grown attached to. So um, just thank you to the commission for the work you do preserving all the architectural beauty in the town. It's, it's a, I mean, anyone who knows the town knows how special it is, uh, what a part of the town it is. So th thank you very much. It means, it means a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So this concludes our abbreviated preservation awards ceremony. We thank everybody for coming out tonight. Like I said, it's great to see everyone. Um, if you're interested at all in preservation, learning a little bit more, we meet every third or second or third Thursday. You can see it on the Township website in this room for 
three, four, sometimes five hours, but um, you'll, you'll get to learn um, a lot about the buildings. And again, I just would like to stress that we are so fortunate to live in a town such as Montclair with our great uh, commercial districts, Bloomfield Avenue, Watchung, Upper Montclair Business District, our residential uh, buildings that are all over town. You could just go pick your street and go down and we have, I have friends that come from, uh, especially England and, they're, and Sweden, and they say, and Italy, they say that they're just amazed at the quantity of really high end, and I say high end, not high end in that they're big and important, but you could see that they're well maintained, well kept, they're loved. And um, so I, again, I'd like to, for everybody to go forward with your preservation hats on and <laughs> just spread the word. Uh, we are going to reinstate our uh, uh, research in your historic house, which was a collaboration with the Montclair History Center, the Montclair Library, and the HPC, which gives people, you know, houses, it doesn't have to be a house, it could be a commercial building even, but gives people an opportunity to really delve into the origins of your uh, building. And we do that through deed searches and access to the Montclair Times and uh, tax maps, which are all held within various centers in, within the town. So look for that. We've also just um, uh, produced a flyer about uh, the HPC and about our design guidelines. And we've distributed those to the Montclair Library, to the uh, Montclair History Center. And we've also put them into um, uh, painting stores and hardware stores. So if anyone has, even if you're not a designated local landmark, if you have a question about a color that you know you think would be appropriate to blend in with the neighborhood character, you have the, or windows or doors or garden features, uh, paving, fences, um, this little one piece uh, paper spells it out and it also gives you the website where, at, where to access our design guidelines, which is all on you know, the township website. All right, so thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.
good. Thank you, Rick. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the June 8th, 2023 meeting of the uh, scheduled meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission. Notice has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting a copy of the notice on the first floor of the municipal building, sending a copy to the Montclair Times, the Star Ledger, and the Herald News. This is a virtual public meeting. A link for members of the public to join is included in the agenda, which is available on the Montclair website, as is a link to tonight's YouTube channel where the hearing can be viewed live or, or thereafter. The hearing is also being televised on Channel 34. Um, roll call, please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Ms. Bennett. Present. Mr. Hindman. Here. Mr. Rooney is excused this evening. Mr. Reimnitz. Here. Mr. Graham. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Giuliano. Here. Ms. Bauer. Here. And Mr. Connolly is also excused this evening. Thank you, Tommy. Um, the first on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting, May 11th, 2023. Has everyone had an opportunity to read? Do you have any changes, addendum, comments? No? Um, Tommy, I have one on page three, line uh, sentence two. Um, ownership transfer from the Tinkham family it, it's the, Loren, the Lorenzen family and then the Paul Volcker family. So Lorenzen is L-O-R-E-N-T-Z-E-N -E and Paul Volcker, B-O-L-C-K-E-R. One more time, that spelling. V-O-L-C-K-E-R. Got it. Um, so I have a, a, a motion to adopt the minutes. Uh, motion to approve as amended. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And John is, is abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then we have a resolution. Resolution application 2023-12509 Park Street. This was for a total demo demolition of a detached garage. And um, this... Uh, I think it's important to read what the demolition um, contains, the, the, the wording for it. The application sought to demolish, totally demolish a detached garage in the northeast portion of the subject property at 509 Park Street. The garage was constructed in 1914 and located on the subject property, which was surveyed in 1981. A record of the survey was filed with the New Jersey State Historic Preservation Office. It was the property, the total property, including the house, the gardens, and the garage, were identified as a potential historic resource in the historic preservation element of the township master plan adopted in November of 2016. Application for total demolition of the garage and statement of need was dated March 16, 2023, and a 10-page photo log of the garage was prepared by the applicant's engineering firm. The uh, Historic Preservation Commission's preservation consultant, our consultant, re prepared a review report of the uh, application, and also as did the uh, department, the planning department. The Historic Preservation Commission, based upon the um, for uh, foregoing testimony, concluded that the applicant failed to adequately substantiate the need to totally de demolish the detached garage building based upon the review criteria for total demolition contained in Montclair Code 347-142.1E3. And specifically, the commission found that the detached garage building did have historical, architectural, cultural, and aesthetic significance. The commission found that the detached garage building was in sufficiently good condition to reflect its original use and to support further adaptive reuse. The commission found that the detached garage building maintained strong ties to the historic use of the adjacent property as Applegate Farms and that its removal would be detrimental to the historic narrative of the subject property as the home of the owner of said farm. The commission found that the retention of the detached garage building could be used to market the potential sale of a subdivided lot containing the structure as an historically significant feature that could be adaptively reused. 
The Commission found that the demolition of the detached garage would be detrimental to the historic narrative and context of this property. The Commission found that the detached garage building was in sufficiently good structural condition that it could be retained and adaptably reused. The Commission found that it is feasible to rehabilitate the structure and that to do so would require minimal intervention. Based upon the foregoing, it is appropriate for the Montclair Preservation Commission to deny the application for total demolition of the detached garage building. Um, and this was adopted uh, today if we vote on it. So <laughs> uh, may I have a motion to? Um, motion to adopt. Adopt, yes. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so motion to adopt um, application 2023-12. Ab abstentions and uh, no votes? Uh, uh, I think Gerald, yes, Gerald I, would abstain. I voted no. So it would be consistent. Okay. So you're abstaining from, the res from adopting the resolution? No, no, I don't have any problem adopting the resolution so long as it recognizes that I, uh, that I voted to but he's not eligible to vote. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So right. he's not eligible. It's an abstention mm -hmm. because he voted no. Okay. Correct. Oh. Okay. Thank you. So moving forward, we go on to committee reports. Um, committee reports. We the minor applications committee met uh, application twenty twenty three dash thirteen. Uh, the application was withdrawn. Uh, this is the Upper Montclair train station. A C of A is not required. We're going to discuss that a little bit further on because uh, with um, uh, our attorney uh, weighing in on that. Uh, application 2023-14 at 314 Bloomfield Avenue was approved with conditions. Application 2023-16 at on Watchung Avenue, uh, Meet Me at Madison's was approved with conditions. 2023-17 at 148 Bloomfield Avenue was also approved with conditions. Uh, the C of A that was applied for at 30 North Mountain Avenue, uh, which known as the locally known as the Molly Schultz House, is pending as the applicant wishes to move that to September, I believe. Um, the revisions committee, then we met on May 18th to discuss 469 Bluefield Avenue. Uh, about, there was a question about the ground level window which fronts on North Fullerton Avenue. So we discussed that and that was resolved. And then in um, uh, yesterday, in fact, we met, the revisions committee met concerning 11 South Fullerton Avenue. And we're going to set up a meeting with Tommy in the near future, possibly next week. Okay? And I think that that's it for committee reports. And They'll do you want me to just, the, the master plan um, committee, the mm -hmm. reexamination re committee, we had a meeting. Do you want me to just summarize what happened there? Um, the master plan reexamination. Right. right. Um, so that the master plan reexamination subcommittee met on May 23rd to discuss next steps um, for that pr that process. Um, and so what's going to happen next is that subcommittee is going to review the goals, objectives, recommendations, and action items contained in the historic preservation element of the master plan, as well as the overall text of the master plan. We're going to meet again in August um, to give everybody sufficient time to do that. I drafted um, an outline of all of the goals, objectives, recommendations, and action items as a starting place for them to to, to start and make edits to. Um, I asked them to have everything to me by the end of July to give me time to put everything together in time for our next meeting in August where we'll kind of figure out then what the next step is gonna be. Do we set a date for that August meeting? August 8th. August 8th. Do, a time? Have you? S I'll have to double check my calendar. Okay, all right. But I'll, I'll send plenty of reminders in advance. Um, okay, and then the other thing that you and I had discussed is about the annual report, and Lindsay mentioned it today, today, the annual report for the CLG. Did you send that to the mayor and the, and the commissioners? I believe, I, I sent it to everybody that I was required to send it to, back in maybe February. Oh, it was February, yeah. 
Uh, could you just double check on that? Because I'll um, double check. I know Lindsay got it for sure. Um, oh no, no, no! I don't. I know that the state. I know that they re- that was required. But I wanted it to be uh, to go out to you know people in our community so that they can see what we're actually doing. I'll double check. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any questions about committees or no? Okay, great. Public comment. Is anyone in the audience would like to come up and speak on? Um, not specifically to an application, but anything concerning historic preservation? No? Okay, thank you. Public comment is closed. Uh, old business. Uh, we have two things under old business. The Label Street Factory local nomination has been continued from March and it will be, it's further postponed to the next meeting, which is July 20th. Uh, the planning board referral from uh, of application 2833509 Park Street has also been propo- postponed until the July 20th, uh, our next meeting. New business. Of uh, the Board of Adjustment, we have a uh, zoning board referral, which is application 2788 at 91-99 Maple Avenue. Northern Property Associates. It's a site plan for expansion of a commercial business. Are people in the audience here to speak to that? If you come up and just set up and then I'll introduce the application. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> Just sit down. So the subject properties are located within the Wheeler Street Potential Historic District. And I'd just like to read a description of the Wheeler Street area, this Potential Historic District, which is as outlined in our um, HP element of the master plan. The Wheeler Street area was primarily built between 1900 and 1929. The area has a more dense urban character than the surrounding neighborhoods and mostly consists of two to three story multifamily dwellings built close to the lot line with small front yards and stoops. Common architectural styles include Dutch colonial revival, Queen Anne and classical revival. Prominent architectural materials in this area include brick, wood and stucco. Um, and as noted, this was also, we received a grant from the, a CLG grant to conduct historic survey of this area, uh, which, is also, which is listed on our, web, on our website. The uh, project description is the applicant proposed the demolition of the dwelling and attached garage lot on, 11, on lot 11, which have since been demolished following approval by the historic Preservation Commission on June 22nd, 2022, just a year ago. In this location, the applicant now proposes paving the lot with angled parking spaces and a small landscape bed adjacent to the sidewalk. The application proposal for lot 12 includes paving the area behind the building with additional parking spaces and the addition of a concrete ramp and loading dock at the rear elevation, closing the curb cut in front of the building and extending the sidewalk and grassy strip along Maple Avenue and converting the building into a showroom and warehouse, which includes replacing all openings on the front elevation with storefront windows and adding a shed roof projection. But we'll see your drawings. Uh, 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 I think they're on the screen now. So um, that is the description of the project. We are hearing this, as I said, because it is in a proposed historic district. And you're, you're requesting um, uh, use variance uh, for, to expand a non-conforming commercial industrial use in a residential z- zone. You're requesting a, two variances for the height of the fence and a design waiver. You're requesting also for angled parking, I believe. That's the uh, four things. Uh, and also a design waiver required to allow parking to the rear and a design waiver uh, to allow parking areas to have non-landscape setbacks less than four feet. 
So with that, that's in our, our planning report. You look confused. Yeah, I have a few changes here. Oh, okay. So you have changes to what we what we've. Okay. This report should reflect those changes, though. Okay. Well, excuse me. Wait. You know what? Before you start testimony, you uh, why don't you identify yourselves and I'll ask. Mess. And just just to clarify, really quick before. She was just reviewing the variances that are listed in the planning report. They're not discussing the variances tonight. Um, and the rear yard one was about screening for the rear parking. The parking is allowed in the rear, just needs to be screened in a specific way. So I just wanted to clarify that. But as the, as the HPC, we're looking to see whether this fits in with the um, character of the neighborhood. So if you would identify yourselves in your relationship to the project, and Ms. Bauer will swear you in. Sure. My name is Jack Gambino. I am the owner of 91, 95, and 99 Maple Avenue. I'm also the owner of Montclair Supply Corp, which is located in 99 Maple Avenue. It's a plumbing supply company. And this is my architect. I'm a, a John Guadagnoli. I'm the architect who prepared the, uh, the plans you see before you. Okay, so what, what we'll do is if you can go through um, the architectural Swearman. your plans. Yes. You have to be sworn in. Do you? Oh, uh, you, you should I'm sorry. stand up. And, uh, well, yeah. I'm sorry. I've, you need to be sworn in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So you didn't get sworn in yet. Both of you raise your right hands. Okay. Do you both solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you'll provide on this application to the commission tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Go ahead. Should I stand up and... I think we have a microphone for you. Oh. Somewhere. Do you have a mic? Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just speak loudly. No. Well, it, it has to pick it up. Can you take that one on the podium? This one? Yeah. Does it come out? It's stuck there. Okay. You can unst unstick it. Oh. oh. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, I should start with the the, uh, the photographs on the bottom, which illustrate the the uh, the condition, the current conditions. There are a number of uh, black and white photos on on the bottom of the uh, sheet you see on the wall, on the screen. And uh, the one furthest left is the the building in question. Uh, it is uh, j just a, a kind of a rough stucco building with a, an overhead garage door, um, a, a, a window opening, and and then a door to the left. It's a one-story uh, structure, um, masonry. And uh, so what we're proposing is what you see on the upper left, which is the, uh, you know, we would, we would give it a stepped uh, uh, parapet, if you will, on top, uh, and a, uh, a, 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 a projecting roof canopy over the, uh, the storefront windows. And the, the entrance is no longer on the left side, as you see in the photo, but it'll be on the extreme right. Uh, comments by, um, by the, uh, I guess, the, the, the historic consultant, Mr. Connolly, Hickey and Connolly, uh, ha they had a few comments, and you know, just want to go through them. And uh, uh, the first one was that, um, uh, he says that the alterations are compatible with historic character of the proposed district. Uh, second thing is the detail of the proposed pen pent roof on the facade shows the material phipon for the brackets, the brackets being, being uh, you can see a detail in the lower left. I put wood or phipon. If, if phipon's not allowed or any other, uh, you know, uh, synthetic material, we'll, we'll just make, get them in wood. That's fine. It'll be painted. We, we, we'll comply with that, no problem. Um, the existing terracotta parapet copings along the side and back, uh, he recommended leaving the terracotta ones and not putting an aluminum coping on it, which, it's fine that that that's okay we'll, we'll keep those old character yeah we'll leave the old character the way it was um, and uh, the uh, applicant shall confirm that the proposed signage con conforms with the township sign ordinance when I put that it did I hope it still does um, that's that that sign is uh, sized to comply so uh, you know unless things have changed I, I you know because this was this was done what's that they have not changed, they have not changed. okay okay so um, I, I don't have the regulation on the drawing, but it, it's based on 
on what's required uh, based on the, on the, the, the size of the facade. Um, and then finally, the applicant proposed a new facade mounted exterior lighting as part of proposed work. Uh, no, we're not. It, it's, um, it, it, the, the, the building is closed at night and uh, we, were just gonna, we were just gonna have a, a, a single like fixture within the soffit above, above the front door and uh, just interior lighting. You know, there's probably a night light inside that'll just glow out, but no, we, we were not gonna put any uh, wall lights on, the, um, on there. Uh, the only other difference, of course, is the, the, the fence on the right, the four foot high sliding gate uh, on, the, on the right to the right that would uh, uh, protect the parking lot. There is a gate there now, but it's, um, it'll be replaced with what you see there. The, the side of the building will still be stucco, uh, as it is now, but a, a smoother face. And we're reducing the size of those side windows to be uh, uh, like just some high windows to let light in. Um, it, we, it's it's uh, mostly warehouse storage back there, or that's what it'll be. And so um, uh, there's really no need to have, you know, big windows there. It's, uh, it's essentially unoccupied. And um, so, and the, and the rear of the building uh, will also have the, t the, the, the existing coping remain. And there are just some minor changes. They're not visible from the street. There will be no loading dock or ramp to the back. That was one of the things that was 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 uh, mentioned that uh, that's no longer happening so uh, it's, it, we've decided it was unnecessary so so it'll stay the same and that's about it it's 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 a n newly jacketed stucco building with a canopy in the front new windows new door new sign and existing coping um, and, and, and that's all it is okay thank you mm -hmm. thank you we'll open it up to questions then from the commissioners um, Jerry would you like to Ask. Uh, no, I don't John? I have no questions. No. I have no questions. I have no questions right now. Uh, uh, no, neither do I. <laughs> okay, so you stole my thunder. You, you read all Tom's remarks. I was going to go over those before we had our discussion. But um, so as you said, it's. Um, Tom did say that uh, the alt proposed alterations to 91 Maple Avenue are compatible with the historic character. Uh, the proposed detail pent roof uh, shows a material of Phipon, but we would request that it be wood, uh, as you acknowledged. The existing terracotta parapet copings would, would remain. And On the side and back. Pardon? On the side well, and back. Actually, let me just cut it for a minute. The front, the side, the back has no copings. Oh, okay. Okay, so retain the terracotta copings on the front and the and side. Side. Okay. Would, is there any part of the building where uh, it would be removed? Uh, um, I would think it would be the front, but with the. Uh, no, no. Here it says here shall remain at the sides and rear of the building in place of proposed aluminum coping. Okay. So the front can be changed because we're we're adding to we're stepping it. You see it. You see the stepping. That's see? on ninety one, right? We're yes. talking about. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You see how it's stepping. Yep. So obviously the existing coping will be gone because we're stepping it. He's con uh, Connolly was concerned with the side, uh, which is staying. That'll that'll remain. Uh, can it be reused on uh, the? On, on the top front? of the step up, they they are they are yeah. cemented down. Oh, cemented and down. they're clay. Yeah, I like them personally. But they're probably not gonna. Them, if I can get them up, I'd put them in the back. <laughs> right. But yeah. I have experience with this, and nine out of ten times you can't get them off. Right. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and I have a question about the signage. Do we are are you going to come back for signage, Tommy or? Uh, is the sign, the, is your proposed sign, what is the material of it? Oh, um, yeah, I have it written down here. Um, uh, wall mounted sign board 18 inches high by 18 feet long. Uh, excuse, I was done a long, this, these drawings were done many, many months ago, so I, I, oh. have, to, I have to remind <laughs> myself as I read it. Uh, 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 by 18 feet long, rounded inch and a quarter border painted in dark green. So we're gonna have like a bullnose around the whole, whole sign. But what is it, what is the material? Uh, oh, it, uh, painted in field white. Um, yeah, it would have to be some durable material. I, I guess it, it could be metal. It could be like a, a metal, uh, like a metal sign. Um, Was a bullnose on it? Yeah, like the, the bullnose could be could be something else. It could be a wood bullnose with a metal sign or something. You know, we, we'll we'll shape it. I mean, 
What does the board suggest? Yeah. And it's it's quite long, wide though, right? It, it's if it's metal, yeah. it, it it should not have seams. Right. One a uh, one piece sign. A okay. one as when far as so you had a question, this this sign will not come back to the commission. So if you have comments, make them as part of this. Okay. I, I don't know what you can make an 18 foot long that won't have a seam. That can't. I mean, it could be mended, but it's 18 feet long. Yeah, it's um, 18 long by 18 inches high. So it's about this high, but it's a long, thin. You know, 18 feet long. Yeah. Which is uh, that's a long sign. <laughs> it's about from me to you. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's about from me to you. Yeah. Well, if you just look at proportionally on the building, it's. You know, and where is it going to be? Yeah. On, on the, the top. Above the. Um, oh. Yeah. Is it freestone? You know, yeah. Just below the coping. It's just, yeah. it's, just a, it's just a rectangular box on, on the wall with lettering in it. It's right up here. Okay. But in terms of material, the suggestions would be from our design guidelines, which. Um, suggest that uh, the material should be consistent with the, the period so something natural like wood or, or okay. aluminum right well aluminum wouldn't be natural but a, a metal sign but yeah. you could use aluminum uh, okay. in lieu of uh, you know an older material right okay that but would actually work but yeah. you can have a coil and roll that out yes right problem mm -hmm. you get a coil that works mm -hmm. heavy gauge coil and do it yeah right with no seams yeah. right no seams. okay yeah all right what are the letters made out of? I'm sorry? It says raised lettering, black. So the lettering is, we're just interested in what the materials are. So what are the uh, letters made out of? Are they plastic? Are they die cut? Yeah, yeah, aluminum? Usually, yeah usually that they, they would be uh, three-dimensional plastic, you know, like they're, they're 3D uh, painted. So, you know, you wouldn't know what they're really made of. But uh, the only other thing to do is, is metal, but there's no, you know, there's no reason for that. I mean, I, I, and I would just, I've seen your signs on other things before, and I, I see the typeface. Is this the typeface that you're proposing? Yeah. This is, so it looks like it has an outline. It's a black and white typeface. It has more depth to it than just being a plain. It looks very seductive, but I just want to make sure that's what it's going to look like. Yeah, it's three-dimensional lettering. It's not like a flat. It's not yeah. flat. It's no, but it's the, but the font. But the but the font, I read a heavy. Like take the M. Yeah, I, I don't want to get too crazy here, but yeah. I look at it. You draw something, and we depend on it. So I look at the M, and it has a very. Is the the right-hand leg of the M has a thick line, a white line, and a thin line. Is a very definitive kind of font. Is that what you're proposing? Well, uh, I'm, I'm proposing something, a three-dimensional variation of this. The, 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 the line work you see was intended to give it like um, roundness or depth. Because if I didn't do that, it would just look very flat. So I chose, some, I chose a, a font, uh, or I should say I chose an, an image that would illustrate the roundness. Okay. And, you know, so it's, it'll be one color. Okay, yeah. so again, just trying to get to it. So these are made out of plastic, they're rounded. Yeah. So they, they start flush with the back face and they round and come back and that Correct. gives them the depth. Okay. Right. right. Any other any other questions? No? Well, I'll open it for discussion and then um, oh one thing that I that I read, the design review about the um, uh, uh, the angled parking then. That's, that has nothing to do with what we need to discuss. Sorry, say that again. The, the design, yeah, it says to, to, to no. consider the okay. site plan. And then the, 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 the uh, fence is higher than um, uh, what is uh, zoning requirement. That's correct. So I, I want, you know, if that, if that impacts, you think, the uh, historic character of the neighborhood, you should mention that. Excuse me, Kathy. I, I, I believe we, we adjusted that to be compliant. That I think we did that in, oh. in the final version. I uh, we did well, that. I just okay, well, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Because yeah. we want to eliminate as many like yeah. unnecessary Okay. No, that's fine. That's options. just that yeah. that um, it wasn't on our planning yeah. report. Okay. Well, should we confirm that? We'll just. What? Well, uh, <coughs> What's the height of the fence? I think in our recommendation, we could just. 
We just note know. that they, the testimony is that they're going to comply with height. In the most okay, recent plans I have, it's shown at five feet. The max is four and a half. It's, it's close, but. Okay, uh, yeah, he, here on our, the latest sub submission, this is the one we, we gave, it, it's on the far extreme, uh, oh wait, sorry. We, we're talking about the, uh, the the building next door now, right? Is that correct? No, we're talking the about fence in between. talking about no, the, the fence, 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 fence in between the buildings. Gate. Yeah. To the right of your facade. There isn't. You have it's it up the on new, the screen. The new fence oh, and sliding yeah. gate. Yeah, the, this one. Oh, the sliding yes. gate. Okay. Do we, do, we say, do we say how high that is? It says five feet. On the, sec on the second sheet of the plans, it's shown at five feet. Oh, oh that's right, because that's what it is now. It's five feet. Well, keep it no, there's nothing there. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with four and a half feet. It works for me. So yeah. the height should, would conform to our yeah, zoning? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah, right. Tom, just make a reference to that in, in, the, in the notes, just so the zoning board will do. Knows. Uh, any other discussion then, Mr. S discussion? Yeah. I think this is a big improvement, <laughs> and I think it's a good job. Thank you. I think the architect did a good job, and I think the owner should Thank be commended. It would be a, a much uh, improvement on that street. Mr. Sweeney, do you have That was essentially my comment. It's an improvement in the neighborhood, but it is consistent with the historic character, and and uh, it, it definitely upgrades it, as a, and it, I view it positively. Thank you, Mr. Hyman. Yeah, no, I, I don't have anything other to add. Um, you know, um, I concur with Mr. Connolly's report and his findings, and uh, appreciate that the applicant is uh, going to make those modifications. Mr. Grell? Yeah, I agree with my colleagues. Um, no further comment. I'm supportive of the application. And Mr. Giuliano? Um, I agree. I'm supportive. I think there's a lot of nice design moves here to keep it consistent with the neighborhood. Um, I like that some of the aluminum has got bronze coloring on it. I like the sign work. Um, the roof bracket overhang is nice, a nice detail. Um, I think it's an overall nice project. And I concur with my colleagues as well. So the recommendations would be um, uh, for the wood brackets, right. uh, retain the terracotta, the existing ones where you on the front and the, uh, not on the, on the front and the side? No, the on the side, 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 the side. side. right. And then uh, the sign as we discussed it, as we discussed, yeah. Yeah. and then the, the uh, fencing to comply with the uh, zoning height. Okay, great. Thank great. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Okay, next up is a uh, referral to the Board of Adjustment. It's application 2847, 408 Grove Street. Uh, Kyle Anthony Hopkins and Christina Maria Camarellas. It's a use variance for expansion of a non-conforming two-family house. Would you please come and sit down, and I will introduce Okay, the subject property is located within the Wildwood Avenue Potential Historic Resource Dis uh, Historic District <coughs> along the west side of Grove Street and the building faces south-southeast towards Grove Street. The applicant proposes two additions. The first is a one-story addition to be constructed on the west side of the existing one-story portion of the house and the second is a two-story addition to be constructed across the rear of the house. We are reviewing this tonight, as I said, because it is in the Wildwood Avenue potential district as, um, as uh, noted in our historic element uh, of the master plan. And this area, the Wildwood uh, Avenue area, was primarily built between 1910 and 1929. Overall, the area consists of two to three-story houses that exhibit a range 
of architectural styles and features. The houses are set back from the streets on lots that vary from medium to small size. A number of these properties are Dutch colonial, revival style residences that exhibit similar architectural features as properties located in the Tremont area. These houses feature distinctive entry porticos, brick stoops, and gambrel or, or gable roofs. A number of uh, the primary architectural materials in the area are wood, brick, stucco stone, and synthetic siding. So, if you would introduce yourselves and your relationship to the project, and then Ms. Bauer will swear you in. Sure. I'm, I'm Kyle Hopkins. I'm the owner of the property. Karen yeah. Brinkman. I'm the architect. Oh, welcome. Okay. Okay, so if you, who would like to begin to describe the plans? Um, oh, this isn't working, right? Uh, if the, the light doesn't work, but the mic does, so you just have to test it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So um, this is an existing two-family house in a one-family zone. Um, we are going for a ver use and bulk variances, which is why we are here. Um, the goal is um, there is a unit on the first floor and a second floor unit, which we are going to maintain. On the first floor, the goal is to create um, distinct separate bedrooms, improve traffic flow between rooms, create public and private areas, and create a master suite on the second floor that will connect to the first floor. Um, at this point, because we are just we're in the process of going for use in bulk variances. You know, at this point, our concern really is getting the massing to relate to the rest of the building. Um, I think one of the things that was noted in the Connolly and Hickey report is that the proposed additions are compatible with the scale and proportion of the existing structures and will be minimally mi visible from the right of way. So both of these additions are on the rear, rear um, will not be readily visible from the street. Um, with regards to the second comment and regards to the roof plan, um, there is a glitch on the printing. So I brought in the correct roof plan. Did I give that to you? Um, and we'll mark this exhibit A1, right. the roof plan. Perfect, thank you. Um, do you have a, pi a picture of what the proposed uh, massing will be on the rear? Uh, uh, it this is your user. Right. Just use the mic on the other side. But it's just, how do I switch that? Just put it down. Okay, so this this is the existing. Can you hit the button on the microphone there as well, please? Uh, no, up there. On the podium. On the podium. There's a button on the podium. There's a button there as well. Okay. Um, so where you can see where the hatching is, that's new. So basically what we're doing is we're continuing um, part of the roof line at the rear, and we're creating two gables. Um, that was the only way we could kind of it's a very large roof and you know how we could kind of make it work what we what we have right now are um, gable tees and this is the solution that we came up with to kind of make it work and not have a massive roof um, so uh, let me see where else are we going um, w with regards to um, exterior materials, um, as I mentioned, you know, mostly what we do is we try to match with the existing. Um, if we're approved, we will get into window specs, you know, railings, all of those kind of details. Our goal would be the predominant pattern is a one over one double hung, so we would try to match that. Um, in bedrooms where we have to have egress windows, we might have to use a casement, but we can do a wide center mall um, to mimic a double hung. 
Um, I will note that, again, most of this is not going to be visible. If we would, any lighting is going to be a wall sconce next to a door, not going to be visible from the street. Um, with regards to HVAC, um, it's noted that any condensers will try to be screened and located to be not visible. And um, with regards to the HVAC unit that's currently in the front yard, um, you know, we can price that out in terms of relocating it, but you know, that's, okay. we'll see where it goes. Does that conclude your testimony then? I think so. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, do we have any questions? Mr. Sweeney? Um, a simple question. The, the house is right now, it's a uh, two-family house, and it, that's a non-conforming use, approved by resolution in 1968. Um, you're essentially expanding. Uh, the entire house would have been adequate for, the, to, for all the intended uses. But your addition is now because you've given up some of the space for a for a uh, two-family home. Um, I think that's only my my question. I'm just verifying that that that's the reason you're doing it. You need the expanded space. The house, as it would be, would have been a, uh, adequate to, and the expansion would not have been needed, but for the fact that you have it's a two-family house now. Is that accurate? Um, In other words, I'm basically <coughs> saying the, the, whole, the, the whole structure uh, would have accommodated the, the needs. The, but you're expanding now because you can't use the rest of the house because that's rented out to others. As a single family house, it would have potentially accommodated the needs of my family, but it would have only house one single family versus being a house for two families, yes. Okay, and it's been a two family since 1968. So it's I been know. really historical. Okay, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to be comfortable that I understand the, the facts of this thing. Yep. But all the, uh, the main addition on the back, the addition is not really visible, at least I can see from the front. And, uh, doesn't seem to detract at all from the historical uh, character. That was that's my my sense. Okay, thank you. Are you you've answered my first question. Thank you, John. Uh, did you say there's a HVAC unit in the front yard? Did I hear that wrong? Or I, did, yeah, I, yeah, that was my question too. That was my question. You did say that. There's a note here. Which it looks notes. like it's on the west side. Is Figure nine six? says it's on the west side. It's item number six in mm. the project comments. Um, shall consider relocating existing front yard HVAC condenser to either the side or rear elevation. What is there, my question is, is there one in the front yard now? There's Does a, that really exist? There's a condensing unit yeah. for a, a split unit. It's behind landscaping. But it's in the front yard. Yes. Between the street and the fr front facade. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. That's my only question. Yeah. Is it possible to relocate that? Is that proposed, or you just haven't gotten? I mean, there it's yet? an existing non-conforming okay. condition. So, I mean, you can't see it. It's. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to go. Are Are you proposing hunt for additional it? units to accommodate the addition? Uh, I'm proposing. Yeah, but yes, that but that's that, but those can be within. They'll, they'll be in the rear. Yeah. You're right. They okay. they can be accommodated. By right. Hmm. I'm going to guess that it, you, you call it an existing non-conforming unit, but it was installed in the front yard years ago, probably without a permit Prior in the front yard. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's not, it's existing non-legal conforming <laughs> unit, so I would encourage it to be moved to the back. Okay. Well, that's discussion. Uh, <laughs> going beyond questions. <laughs> Any more questions? Jason? Um, 
No, no question. That was my only question. The rest is comments. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Mr. Giuliani? Just clarify on the plans. Where do you come in for the unit upstairs on the proposed plan? Um, it's on the side. There's existing stairs on the side. Okay. You know, you, there is a side elevation that shows that. Okay. And that's not being changed? No. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, one more question. So you're suggesting you're coming before the Historic Preservation Commission with no indication of materials or windows or mm. anything. You're saying you're well, I mean, perhaps going to do that down the road. Well, we, we have to do it down the road. But, you know, obviously we're going for a use and a bulk variance. Uh -huh. So it, in my experience, it's better to get the approval before, you know, before putting all the effort into details, if you're not going to get for something yeah. that might okay. not get approved, so yeah. does right. that come back to us? No, it wouldn't come back. But, it wouldn't but wouldn't we could have a discussion about okay. what is it, yeah. the revisions but committee? I mean, the, the goal is that yeah. you know we're going to try and match materials as mm -hmm. best we can. Um, per the Department of Interior guidelines, you know, you usually want to have a delineation between what's existing and you know the new addition. So it, you will notice that on the north side. Um, there is a slight offset. Um, if so, if you look at at the middle plan, which is the, you can see that there is a slight offset there. So that's very easy for us to do. On um, the south side, however, um, we do want to have that second floor line up structurally with the first floor below, and that first floor is in line with the existing house. So. Um, in that location, you know, whether we c maybe we have like a vertical board to delineate between the old and the new siding. Um, this house doesn't have corner boards, so we can't really u utilize that feature as you know to do some sort of distinction between them. Um, but you know, there there is a vertical board right now between what's the existing sunroom and the original house. Yeah, and assuming there's no vegetation there, right, because we have to consider it without the landscaping and without the trees blocking it, that would be visible from, from the street, the more so than the, than no, the, not than at the, the rear? No, not at the, at the south side, no, it's not going to be visible at all. I thought you were referring to that part that's flush, uh, the front uh, one story. Oh, no, you're okay. <laughs> Should have gone the other way. Okay, um, no, right here there's an offset. Yeah. yeah. No, that I understand. Yep. Right. So it's over here. And what about the one and up that, front? So this is the south side. Yeah. Right? So this is not, this is, to have this be visible from the street there yeah. is almost, that's not, that's almost going to be impossible. Are you saying even without uh, the landscaping that's currently there? I mean, th because you've got this roof yeah. and this bulk piece that's existing. So that's really going to hide anything that's back okay. here, in my opinion. That's, that's you broke Rick's microphone. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Um, I, I have a question. The window that appears to the to the side of the front door. What type What type of window is that? It's in your. It's in the photographs. That is visible from the street. It looks like a double, it looks like a sliding. It's like a picture window, they're not, they're not, oh, okay. they're not movable. Everything's and, and everything's happening behind. And, right. Does that conclude your testimony then? Right. So, what you were—the question you were asking—is about the front facade, which we're not changing. Right. Right. That whether or not you were going to change it. I didn't. I just couldn't. No. I didn't understand what the, that window was. It, I, I mean, it looks like a replacement window that somebody put in, almost like a sliding window that would have gone out to a a porch. Is it like a? Well, that was an existing porch that's been enclosed. Oh. Okay. This. Okay. 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 Um, so, does that conclude your testimony? All right. 
So let's just go over Tom's comments then. Um, the first thing he said is that the proposed additions are compatible with the scale and proportion of the existing structure and will be minimally visible from the public right of way, which is what you just pointed out to us. Um, the, uh, and I, he says that the existing and proposed plans are not drawn accurately. The one-story hip roof on the front does not start at the corner of the second floor. Please show the proposed one-story addition in second floor bay on the west uh, elevation. Indicate all chimneys on both the roof plans and elevations. Please show the one-story bay window and all stairs and landings on elevations. Please indicate all existing and proposed windows on plans and elevations. But what you're saying is that um, you will do the have those details with more um, detailed plans after? Yeah, right, yeah, I mean, yes. Well, I gave Tommy the um, revised, okay. roof, revised roof plan. So those details are in A1? Or are you well, saying it's that? just the revised, the revised roof plan, which oh, okay. didn't print out gotcha. correctly. But yes, all of that would be done you in post-resolution conformance. Right. Okay. Okay. And then um, he also suggests adding a projection, projecting Eve. Um, the drawings indicated projecting Eve on the 1968. Did you? Uh, so there, there are decorative um, exposed rafter tails and barge boards. Um, we would love to mimic those. Yes. So okay. that's our intent. And then he also, well, it's materiality that uh, you. Yes, yeah, so our goal is to match existing as, as much as possible. So we could, maybe you could come back to the revisions committee uh, with the materials. Uh, design review committee. Design okay. review committee. Okay, we'll put that in the, our recommendations. And gutters and leaders need to be, be shown on the construction drawings if approved. And then um, the whole, uh, proposed an existing HVAC condensers and you know whether or not you're going to move the one that's in the front to the back that should should be moved and um, and that they all should be screened Correct. okay so um, uh, any we'll open up for discussion from commissioners then um, why don't we start with mr. Giuliano are you <laughs> prepared to Yeah, um, I mean, I think overall on the sides, the massing is fine. Um, I think it breaks up pretty nicely from the front to the back. Um, I would consider maybe on the rear, maybe stepping the right side, maybe in like a foot, just to break it up so that it's not one full flat facade. You know, if you're in the yard, it might feel a little better to break it up into two. Like maybe take a foot out of the sunroom and the bedroom upstairs, and then maybe like a overhang over the back entry door mm. something a little more decorative it just looks a little plain right now maybe we could add a little bit to it you know to make it a little bit more friendly if you're in the backyard but other than that i think you know the rest of it is pretty consistent massing wise with everything thank you mr graham it, i agree i, I think uh um, it's uh, thoughtful and i think the fact that it's all virtually hidden in the back of the home i think uh, uh, done a nice job there and um, uh, I do think just the first story might be you know without the vegetation possibly more visible but I, I don't see that as a uh, significant issue I think uh, overall I'm supportive of the project and um, I do agree with my colleagues uh, mentioning earlier that uh, some consideration should be taken uh, for the condenser that you referenced um, it may not be there legally permitted so something to look at uh, yeah, I, I agree from, you know, an overall concept. I think it's uh, consistent with um, the uh, character of the existing home. Like you said, the massing is appropriate. It's positioned or um, the placement is, is appropriate being in the rear. Um, the uh, overall, the, the variance request, I would support that. Um, use variants um, the site can clearly accommodate the additional massing since Tommy can can you confirm I saw in the planning report that it was just the one bulk variance for width but that's not even applicable it, it, it doesn't apply they don't need that so it really is just the use variance the site can clearly um, 
uh, accommodate the additional massing and historically it's been a two-family house so I think it's appropriate I would support the variance um, you know with with the caveats being you know it, upon approval we want to see those additional details we would want the zoning board to refer this to the design review committee to confirm the materials um, uh, confirm the additional details that you're putting in the construction plans uh, and and I would also um, agree with my colleagues to uh, recommend um, removing the HVAC unit relocating it to the rear or the side where the new units are going to go and screening it with landscaping thank you John I don't have anything to add. I agree with <laughs> both of you guys, all three of you. So um, I support it in general. I support it in general too, but the, uh, the, the missing information of the materials are important and they, they should be compatible uh, and consistent with the existing materials of the uh, building. So um, we would generally uh, I would generally support it, but we do need all the information supplied. So. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I agree with my colleagues. Um, you've, I think you've got a good head start on this project. Uh, welcome to Montclair. <laughs> and um, I look forward to seeing the improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is a, uh, a development review committee referral, application 2848-17-19 Munn Street, the French Institute Alliance Francois, at, uh, it's a minor site plan for a fenced-in outdoor play area. Would you like to come Do up? Welcome. I'm going to introduce the application, and then we'll uh, we'll proceed. Uh, this is a um, minor site plan. The applicant proposes to create two enclosed outdoor play areas with a five-foot chain link fencing on a paved concrete area along the west side of the building, adjacent to the parking lot. The work will include repairs to damaged concrete in this area. The play areas will be used uh, by children. The uh, property is located in the Walnut Street Potential Historic District as identified in the historic preservation element of the master plan. This property was listed on the New Jersey State Register of Historic Places in 1986, known as Tikawika. Sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew how to say it. Tekawika Hall. The application is being referred to us in accordance with Montclair Code 347-142. Um, we have the consultant's report and a report summarizing uh, the, the, our comments will be included with the application materials to the development review committee. Uh, if you would um, identify yourselves and then Ms. Bauer will swear you in. Sure, so I'm Caitlin Adamas, I'm the architect. And I'm Matthew Benchstock, the designer. You're, who are you? Architectural designer, Matthew Benchstock. Oh, okay, all right, great. The uh, testimony you will provide on this application before the commission tonight will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Go ahead. Okay, great. So, do you have those? Is that the plan right there? It's up. Would you like to walk us through? Yes. Yeah, so, that is the floor plan right now. It's just this is the existing uh, wall plan. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, just want to don't. point to the fence because it's such a small area. Okay. So this this is the existing building. It's used group E. Um, the French Institute Alliance franchise is leasing out the second floor. So their plan is to alter that second floor to use to teach classes from two and a half years old up to adult. So what they need to do since they're applying for their child care center license is add an outdoor play area to the parking lot side of the building is where we're looking at. Um, so essentially 
this is the fence that we're adding we need to add two gates one that's remote from the main entrance well what we're calling the main entrance is the parking lot side entrance of the building and we also have this additional fenced in area that we're adding here this fence is existing um, there is an existing gate here that we are replacing just because we need to add a positive latching fence that is self-closing to comply with the child care center new jersey administrative code the fence will be galvanized steel um, it'll be black to match the existing fence i actually brought a photo if you guys want to look at it um it'll yeah, match yeah the can fence. you pass around we'll mark that a1 the only thing that is not going to match is the weave the scale of the weave so we need to install a weave that is an inch and a quarter so that it's not climbable so that kids can't climb out of it so that is a the existing fence i think is three and a half inches the weave we need to install an inch and a quarter And the sorry, so you, I'm sorry. You said you had to make it smaller for the kids, right? Is that what it was, like? Is that what you mean by that? Can you say that again about the weave? Oh yes, the weave. So if it's three and a half inches, then it's climbable. It, right. We we can't have a climbable fence there. And the other fence is three and a half. The right? other fence is three and Got a half. Got it. Okay, thank you. Gotta keep the inmates in. Yeah. And the <laughs> other the other fence just encloses the parking lot. Correct. Correct. Okay. So the other fence is the perimeter of the lot. The fence we're adding is within the lot. So we just need to add a fence in between the building and the parking lot because we don't want kids wandering into the parking lot. Is that technically the rear entrance there, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. I believe so. What would you call this fence? Oh, in turn, how would you describe? Is it? Would you describe it as a chain link fence? Yes. So I, I have the detail here. I brought as well just a small printout. It's, it's a galvanized steel chain link fence. And this, this is an exhibit that was already provided, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. We, we emailed it to you. <laughs> Does that conclude your testimony? Yes, that concludes. Okay, I, I have a question. How does the galvanized steel, what you described, differ from chain chain link? So it's it's the same. The chain link is just what it looks like. So chain link, it, it's woven, but it's it's the same. So it just has to do with the materiality of the chain link fence. So it's galvanized steel. It'll be coated with a polymer black to match the existing fence. Is that stronger, like, to protect the yeah, kids? So is that what it's for? Well, galvanized is better for exterior conditions. Um, it doesn't weather as fast if you were to use aluminum. Is, it, is the exterior fence that you have there now aluminum, uh, the one surrounding the perimeter? So that I don't know because it's coated in a polymer. Okay. Usually the chain link fences are galvanized steel, though. Okay. Will, will the posts be coated as well? Yes, they will. Okay. So, the, you know... Um, it will be as abrasive as a regular aluminum fence. Correct, okay. correct. Uh, the reason I asked how you would describe is because it, in our historic guidelines, I think if you've seen it, that we don't recommend the use of chain link fences. Um, however, I do see for the consistency with the rest of the project why you would want to use it. And I guess with children, you really can't use a slat and post uh, oh. Correct. They have very stringent requirements, especially with children two and a half. So this old. is the only type of fence you can use. It's, with? it's not the only type. I brought the requirements here. So it's not the only type, um, but the openings can be no larger than three and a half inches. The gates need to be equipped with self-close closing positive latching. The posts need to be located outside of the fence. Um, so the supporting posts, 
the fence needs to be minimally four feet tall because it can't prevent, or it needs to um, accommodate the observation of children by caregivers and teachers. So mm -hmm. that's another reason why chain link is appropriate. You need mm -hmm. to be able to see through it. And they need to be constructed to discourage climbing. Now that, that three inch, is that, um, that maximum for the entire opening or is it just width like could you have like the vertical beam like kind of the rod iron it's a requirement for stairs right it's uh, the same requirement so kids head can't get so it couldn't be just through. like a three so and a half inch vertical opening. Yes. that would be too big I guess it's it's always possible but we want to try to avoid yeah. as many openings as possible especially with kids mm -hmm. Uh, questions? Yes, right now there's no fencing there at all. Correct. Around that existing paved area, paved area, there's no fencing. Okay, and the fencing is needed for the safety and security of the kids? Correct. Um, and did you say you have or have not explored other types of fencing? So we have, but this was the one that we came across that we felt was the most, um, it met the requirements the best with the code so okay because it, it seems to be somewhat out of character of the area at least in, in my observation okay. and um, as we mentioned chain it's in the description it's referred to as a chain link fence and that's the way we sort of look at it right it's it's got the uh everything that looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and, uh, and, and waddles like a duck. So it looks like a chain link fence. Right, and um, that's what it is, yep. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I, no, no, no. You, you, you answer my questions, thank okay. you. John. Are, are we commenting now, is that what we're oh, doing? Quest now? Questions? Questions, uh, I don't have any other questions. I understand what's going on here. Um, I understand what's going on, but I just want to be sure that you've exhausted all of the possibilities for any another style fence. So I will say we've explored other styles, but we also wanted a fence. I mean, as you can imagine, the kids are going to be running around a lot. We wanted a fence that if a kid were to run into the fence, it's a little bit flexible as well. So I don't really know of many other options besides the chain link that would allow for that flexibility. Um, because if we were to go with a, an aluminum post fence, it's, it's not flexible, it's hard. And uh, is the work including, I see from the pictures, there's a grass, grass area. Are you keeping those grassy areas uh, or replacing that with AstroTurf or? Do you have the picture of the grass area? I think area? It, that's in the, um, I don't the know. planning. It's AstroTurf. Um, if you, it's on figure oh. figures five and six. Oh, okay. So that is a loose leg AstroTurf. It's uh, not permanently fixed. So, so it's, it's like a, it's like a little outdoor rug. It's like a mat. It's concrete yeah. underneath it. It's basically an outdoor rug. Oh really? So it's all concrete with just it's, it's mm -hmm. just concrete, yep, and that's just a loose life rug that they put down. Everything there right now is loose life furniture. We're not proposing any fixed playground equipment or flooring at this time. Okay. Oh I didn't yeah, I didn't un understand what that was. Um, I, I do have another question. Yes. Are there privacy concerns also such that you might have to uh, put some kind of screening device on the fence? So the reason why we're not doing any screening devices because it just it's a code requirement. Teachers and staff need to be able to observe the kids. So we can't really put any privacy slats on the fence. They need and to be observable. And I'll also chime in on the exterior of the fence. Have had they put in privacy slats or something like that, that would also require a variance. Yes, which I, would I then know. send I'm them to the point of adjustment. I'm looking at that. It's to protect kids, mm -hmm. uh, and and there may be added privacy. That's why I wanted to find out if you plan to have any kind of uh, screening. And you said no, you don't. Right, it, it was part visible, of the initial discussion. But okay, so what you need is something that will keep the kids in, mm -hmm. keep other people out, but. Uh, um, 
conform to uh, what the uh, what the conditions of, of the area. Correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And could you? How high is the fence? Can you just confirm? That? Yeah. So five foot high. The fence is going to be five foot high. And is that the same height as the existing fence? Yes. That's it's to match existing. Okay. Jason? No, no other questions or comments. Mike? I, I, I get using the chain link because it matches the uh, perimeter fence, uh, but there are, um, and I'm thinking specifically my, you know, kids went to Park Street Academy, they do do like the white picket fence around their play area, um, and uh, I'm not aware of any injuries to the little kids, you know, mm -hmm. based on smacking in the fence, but mm -hmm. uh, um, it, it, is there um, is the main reason for going with w what is the main reason for choosing this um, design rather than a picket well we want it to be as inobtrusive as possible so okay. matching the existing would be the main reason if you're asking what the main reason is. okay um, all right that's it for now thank you mr. Giuliano so the three inches is that vertical and horizontal is that the reason for the chain link yes okay well hold well, on wait uh, you so you're if you just had balusters okay so no you could have balusters you could have balusters mm -hmm. you just the three and a half inches is you can't have like you need to be able to design the fence so that uh, a sphere that's over three and a half inches in diameter can't fit through the fence okay that's what the way the code is written yeah yeah, I don't have any other questions. Um, you know, the three and a half I'm familiar with. I'm an architect myself. I've just never done stuff for kids, institutional. I didn't know if there was an additional requirement that it can't be more than three and a half this way, but also not that way. No, there's not. So if that is the case, I'd probably be more in favor of just something vertical, um, you okay. know, just so it maybe looks a little more contemporary rather okay. or less utilitarian. Um, but again, you make a good point about having flexure with it you know if somebody runs into it mm -hmm. but just in general you know if we could get a if we could make it work with just the three and a half vertically you know as long as the spacings are right I, I would like to see maybe something more like that okay um, I have no other questions um, uh, but I so moving on um, I just want to go over Tom's report which says he, it's his opinion that the proposed work is compatible with the size, scale, and material of the existing fencing and will have minimal impact on the historic structure and is in keeping with the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation. So I think the question that we have is really the whole idea of the chain link and whether that's um, uh, compatible uh, for, for the, the, uh, the historic district. Um, I think it is compatible with what's already there. Obviously, it's the same type of fence. And I think your argument that um, you know you want the visibility uh, and and the flexibility of the structure, um, I think is is uh, justified. Um, I just you know it's just chain link. We've did across the street the the uh, who came before us. Last month, we told they, there was an old chain link fence there, and they, we said, suggested that they take it, remove it, which they they are. So I think what we have to grapple with is whether or not we uh, would, you know, say, chain link or find another material. Okay. I, 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 can I ask one other question. I'm, I'm sorry. I, go ahead. I didn't get it all at once. Okay. But uh, do you have a long-term lease with the? Uh, with the church or not? Yes, yes. How long, long is that lease? Eight years. Eight years? Okay, and are we at the beginning of the eight years? So yes, yes, okay. yes. So uh, that's important to me to see what kind of investment you could uh, uh, want. You're not, you weren't the applicant owner, which I know is the owner's permanent, but uh, you're going to be there for eight years? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, you've answered my question, okay. but my, my comment that goes with it, then you, you, uh, you may be able to afford a, a more significant investment than a chain link fence. My question is, where's the, ex 
Can you outline where the existing fence runs? Is that on the other side of those trees? Just how sure. much of the exists? I can't tell from it photos. Runs Pretty big, yeah. It, it runs all the way. Yeah, the whole parking lot. It runs the perimeter of yeah, the parking lot. Yeah, the whole lot. parking lot. <laughs> it's a big parking lot there. I actually have a quick question too. The the portion of the existing chain link fence, the perimeter fence, mm -hmm. that is proposed to be replaced as well with the new chain link that's smaller. No, no. no. Okay. We're only um, we're only adding to that fence. We're not touching the existing fence along the perimeter. And that's as far as the child care center code. That's compliant. Yes, Even yes, it's compliant. Okay. I have one more question. I don't know if it's scheduled anywhere on the drawing, but is there any way it could be colored or powder coated so that it's not just like the rough multi gray? Yeah, so it will be it? powder coat. Well, it'll it'll be covered in a polymer mm -hmm. um, to match the existing fence, so it'll be black. Okay. I mean, if it's got a nice flat color to it, I'm a little more open to it than just like a gray fence that you mm -hmm. would see just out of stock metal. Any other questions? No? All right. Um, discussion? Jerry? Just my, uh, my sense is that uh, chain link fences, we start from a negative. It's, uh, it isn't generally consistent with the overall historic character of the area. So if you add it, it's, it starts out at a, at a, at a negative. I think what you're saying is that all the other fencing around there looks like this and therefore this is put in to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, so my comment is just about any other fence that will achieve the objective. We support fencing, by the way. You need it. It's safety. It's all essential. So we absolutely support that. Uh, we're looking for things that are more historical. Uh, in this situation, if it's the same as all the other fencing around it, I have to say, we would have to say it's it's consistent. But it isn't. Our, it certainly isn't uh, the, the preference. We do prefer things that look in historical character. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with you, Jerry. I mean, normally I would. I started off being against it, mm -hmm. but now that I see that everything else is made the same way I want to be cons I would prefer to be consistent than uh, mm -hmm. you know change halfway through you know so I would tend to the existing fence is five feet high yes I believe uh, it's five feet high okay so I would tend to approve this Jason. yeah I kind of agree uh, with with John you know almost to a T uh, I mean, if, if, if it was a standalone fence, I would want to go with something more uh, traditional and appropriate for the district, but it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense if it's surrounded by a chain link mm -hmm. fence, so. And a very large chain link fence of that, it goes, I mean. Large chain link fence, a large parking lot. So very, I very large parking lot. We're getting yeah. anything out of it, so. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess my only thought is, um, you know, I hate to go back to questions, but could the fence or closer to the building for the kids be a little bit lower? I, mean, I know it's five feet on the perimeter. Is that a requirement? No, no, so we just, it, yes, it can be lower. Yeah. We can lower it by one foot. By so a requirement foot. is minimum four feet. Because I'm just looking at the picture, and when you're close to the building, maybe that seems a little bit uh, aggressive, okay. the five feet height. I don't know, maybe consider the, the lowering a little bit. But other than that, given how much chain link fence is on this property already, um, I think um, it makes sense to be consistent that way. It's hmm. a good point. And and the way that the I just it's, I have another question. The way one of these renderings looks like, uh, but I know you wouldn't do it because it's for kids. But it looks like it has spikes at the top. No, it's 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 just the chain link. Right, right. It's right. Just yeah, a, okay. it I just want it. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. okay. <laughs> Don't spike the kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just a graphic. It, I mean, this is that's that was something. Else. Okay, yes. all right. It was something I saw in one of these renderings, Mr. Giuliano. Um, I would agree with everybody else's comments and and conclusions on it. I think given the amount of existing fence that's already there, um, and my colleague just showed me a nice street view of it. it you know, it really is almost invisible, other than the intermediate posts. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I think it's it's not unfinished metal. It's painted. The new one will be painted. Um, and if it's practical for the kids and the teachers, you know, I'd rather see the investment go to some books or technology for the kids in the mm. classes rather than a fence. So yeah. I'd be in favor of it. I promise you that's where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to say that I thought the same thing when I saw Chainlink. I was against it, but you, I think you've made a convincing argument. And actually, really trying to visualize a different style there is it is difficult for me. If you would propose something else with, you know, the existing Chainlink that surrounds the parking lot, I, yeah, that I changed everything. Yeah, it, yeah. it would. It would. Um, so I would be in agreement with it as well. So I guess we all agree with uh, Tom's um, comment. Okay. Does it, does everyone agree also lowering maybe? Yeah, the I think to four I, we recommend uh, lowering it to four. Yeah. Okay. Just because it yeah it's right when it's right next to the building it's different right. than perimeter so. Yep, that's not a problem. Okay. Okay, great. All Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next we have a uh, Board of Adjustment Referral Application 2851 109 Union Street. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we know this building well. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Very well. <laughs> I have to say it's so it's so refreshing and gratifying to see that um, it's being kept, maintained, and um, looks like the work that you're doing on it will be what will go forward. So 109 Union Street is a two and a half story Tudor Revival resident constructed in 1905. It's a fine example of its type and displays typical features of the style, including unadorned barge board gables, half timbering at its upper stories, and brick at its ground floor, multi-light sashes, and cross gable roofs. According to the uh, 1986 Historic Site Survey, it, um, the residence is a fine example of Tudor Revival architect and its architecture and is one of the many similar houses found in Montclair. The house is an integral part of the neighborhood, which is distinctive due to its mix of residences of similar size and placement along the street, adopting the popular architectural styles of the period, such as Tudor Revival, Queen Anne, Shingle Style, and others. Many of the neighboring houses were designed by prominent local architects, and 109 Union Street works seamlessly with these known architect design residents. Union Street was also part of Preservation Montclair, a town-wide survey that determined possible notable architectural resources in the township. The properties along Union Street were part of the Phase One survey. 109 Union Street was one of several properties surveyed. And as we know that um, this house was slated for de with demolition, uh, was that two years ago or three years ago? And um, we did not approve the demolition, so um, it's it's great to see that it will be um, survive, and <laughs> it looks like it'll it, it looks 2020, right? It we did it over Zoom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was that's right, 2020. There were two time two flies. Yeah. There were two applications. <laughs> what? Weren't there two there applications? Two. Yeah. yeah. 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, two demolition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, this applicant proposes to remove an existing deck at the rear of the house and construct a one-story addition on approximately the same footprint as the existing deck. A new smaller deck with steps connected to an existing raised stone patio will be constructed on the west side of the addition. The addition will be clad in stucco with half timbering with a gable roof, and two symmetrical windows are on the north elevation. So, gentlemen, if you would identify yourselves, then Ms. Bauer will swear you in. I'm Mike Ebay. I'm the owner. And I'm Javier Fuentes, the architect. Thank you. I do. I do. 
Okay, thank you. So we have the plans up. Um, if you would just walk us through. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm just going to go and take the mic over here on this side. Uh, so on the upper right corner, upper left corner, I'm sorry, you can see the existing and the proposed. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, there's um, a covered part of a covered deck a deck that extends out part of it is wood and then there's a stone patio that's actually attached to that um, so the stone patio area is remaining and what we're doing is we're trying to you know celebrate the architectural style um, you know and, and thinking of the massing and looking at the style and trying to uh, bring it into a cohesive design that feels like it's always been there it's not to you know tear down what is there but just to celebrate it and make it a little bit better and, exp and expand um, uh, the space, the floor space, a little bit. So if we go through the existing plan, you can see the back area where the deck is, the, ex the mudroom space that connects it. There's a kitchen that's kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge. There's like two islands and there's a, like a sink off to the side, cabinets, and then there's like a, a small niche area there that we call kind of like the breakfast nook. It's got a, a nice little beautiful dormer off on the side. <clears throat> and um, so we're maintaining that, but we're sort of bringing it together in these in, the, in a another gable that's crossing with that style. <clears throat> so here you can see the existing elevations. You can kind of get the massing of what the existing building looks like. The 3D also paints that picture for you. And at the bottom, you can see the side elevation of that dormer I mentioned. That is the existing dormer of <clears throat> the gable that's facing there. That is the uh, like a little breakfast nook space. So the rear addition that's happening, you can see that we've pulled away the kitchen a little bit. We've we're sort of uh, you know creating this really nice piece centered in the space where the addition is happening. There's a mud room connect that connects to that deck, that smaller deck with sta the stairs off to the side, and then there's a pantry space for that kitchen, uh, trying to create something a little bit more expensive and um, uh, create a family room that the, the home, um, uh, one of the things that the, the applicant was looking for was to be able to create this a nice space that connects with the kitchen. Because as we know, a lot of the, uh, a, as you can see, like a lot of the like open concept styles have really sort of changed the way that we perceive kitchens and having them be a, sort of more of a congregational space that back in the day wasn't that, you know, with this home, right? So, but now we have, you can see the modifi modifications that we've made and the elevation, you can get a real feel for the massing. You know, it's really intended to celebrate the original design by having the stucco, the half timbering, uh, some of those uh, elements that, that really reflect on the existing style and sort of ties everything together so that it, o so that it, uh, it feels uh, uh, that it's always been a part of, right? And um, I would say that would conclude our presentation and I look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I should mention that um, the proposal is required, seeking a variance to allow a rear yard setback of 38 feet where 59 feet um, is required. Yes. That's the shape of the lot. Of the shape of the lot right? Yeah, it's the, the existing shape. irregularity of the shape of the lot, so that's why it's requested, required. Is it being exacerbated? Are they counting, because there is that deck portion that wraps around, is Correct. that also counted in the setback? So it so because it is covered by the roof, and, and I believe in Montclair, yes, I'm sorry, it is with the building, it counts as part of building coverage, so it does cons it is considered part of the building. So that is already existing, but while we are expanding, expanding right on that line, okay. yeah, we're, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I had a question about that first, the existing first floor rear portion. Mm -hmm. Is that original to the house or was that itself an addition? Do you know? I, I don't know. I, I think it was an addition based mm -hmm. on based on the, the, rest of the structure of the house. It, I'm, it looks I'm like not an addition. quite sure. It looks, yeah. like, it looks like an addition, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I mean, I will say, like, it does feel a little bit different, right. like, uh, overall that space. Um, you know, one of the things that is consistent in terms of, like, the Tudor is, it is that multiple gable, but mm -hmm. I don't feel that that was something mm -hmm. that was original, right? Yeah. 
Because yeah. it, it just looks, I mean, not out of place, but it, it does look different than the, the original. Oh, for sure. so. sort of out of and I, I'm, I'm curious, Mr. Rube, um were you able to view the house um, while it was, I guess, gutted? Like, did you? Yes, did and it's still you, gutted. It's still yeah, gutted. It's still gutted. Can you tell a, a difference in terms of what's well? That's what's well, exposed. I Can guess you, that's the, the the addition part is not gutted, right? Oh, so, okay. that, that, I mean, I guess the back part, but which we which we think is the addition, mm -hmm. that part wasn't gutted. Oh, so that's okay. why yeah. I think that's why I think that part is an addition. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm fairly sure. sure it was an addition. Mm -hmm. I actually walked through the, another buyer in January, um, potential buyer. And it doesn't look like there was any asbestos in the back part right, because right. the sheetrock wasn't gotcha. gutted. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just that's from the why floor I mean, plan, I'm guessing that second stair that they're abandoning probably went down into the kitchen from a butler's quarters or something upstairs that they wouldn't have to use the main stair. Mm -hmm. So I think that you know where the steel beam is designated was probably the original rear of the mm. house. Um, so any other questions for Mr. Giuliani or Mr. I Brian? don't think oh. so. Are you um? Is anything in the addition sunken? Like I see, there's a hard line next to the steel beam. Is that a step down? Is the oh oh that couch area stepped down at all? No, it's not stepped okay. down. Yeah, it's all at the same level. Okay, that was my only question. Thank and you. you can't see this from the street, right? I mean, is there? No. no, no, no. It's and again, same question as some of the other applicants. Even removing all the trees and everything. I mean, I feel like this is barely visible from the street. Is that accurate? I yeah. would say or, so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, if you say that it's going to be on the same footprint, and yet in the planning memo on page two, it says the improvements will result in a net reduction in impervious coverage. Mm -hmm. Oh, of 3.6 square foot. I thought, oh, yeah. you know what? I read that it's 36. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, there is a portion of, there's a stair that steps out, and so because of the way the code the ordinance is written, it, it counts a, as part of the structure. So we, you know, in sort of in reducing that, it's a reduction, right. but it's, right. you know. There's stairs, that, there's stairs, <laughs> okay. that, there's stairs right. that's going towards the garages we're removing, so that is, that's leading to the reduction. Yeah, purpose. okay, thank you. Of course, you're welcome. Um, I don't have any questions per se to the addition, but I do have a, this is the house that had the asbestos, yes. is that it? Can I ask you how you're dealing with the claim of the first people who came before us is <laughs> <laughs> they, they could not salvage the, the uh, house? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, they, um, during the sale process, they did their own testing. Um, so I, I took a look at their, their results. And also after, after I closed, I also did my own testing as well because I'm going to be moving my family. So you tested everything? I tested right? everything mm. as, okay. yeah. as well. Okay. Like I said, I'm moving well, my family in there. We so have, We I'm held our ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. And <laughs> we, we, we may have not been on. We to encase it and suspend we, all we that. May, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> a couple of board members may have been on the opposite yeah. side. I, I don't know the history. I don't know why they wanted to to do the yeah. demo, I mean, I know there was a special uh, yeah. They, yeah. They, they, did, they did the, uh, beautiful. They, they did it was. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I, I think based on the zoning board here, they wanted every speck of asbestos out of the house, and it's just it's not mm. feasible. You can encapsulate but you don't, it, you can do right. all sorts of things. You don't right. to seal that. it in, you know, <laughs> right. whatever. Mm. So, okay, great, good for you. I, we <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. It's a great house, so yes, uh, I don't have any question. other questions. Thank you. So my, my question was, uh, how long have you owned the house? Um, I purchased it, uh, I believe, in March. Just, how, just a few long? months. Just March. a few months ago, yeah. back in March. I think it was back in March. Oh, February, okay. March. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, uh, I think we're we're thrilled to know that mm -hmm. you're building rather than uh, <laughs> taking down. So, I, I just, um, I don't really have any uh, questions except uh, the as to the materials that would be used on that uh, addition in the back. They'll be consistent and compatible and comparable to the materials used for the rest of the house? Yes. Okay. I think that's... Any uh, other questions? No, that's... So um, you've received Mr. Conley's report then. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll just go over what he, what he delineated. There's four points. Uh, the applicant shall prov provide a roof plan showing the proposed addition. Um, the proposed addition simplifies the existing massing and roof line of the previous addition and is compatible with the historic character of the existing building and scale size and, and 
of proportion, which I think is mm -hmm. uh, is our uh, collective uh, thought. Applicants shall locate on the drawing all existing or proposed HVAC condensing units. Is that on your drawing? Did you or? So it, on, it's not currently on there. Um, okay. We do have um, a system going in. And our intent, I mean, I would think, right? Yeah. We would want to keep it in the rear. No yeah, way. It's we would right now, it's on the side. Yeah, it's on the side. Of the the existing system, that was ripped out as part of the demo, right? So th there's nothing in there right now? There's, um, there's, no, there's no the HVAC, because I, I recall that was part of the issue, that it, it sucked up a lot of the asbestos and then spread it around the house. Well, oh, did they say the air handler inside? Uh, would have been the condenser uh, gotcha. inside. Right. Well, all but the, they didn't all, take out the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, all the ducting has been removed. Okay. All mm -hmm. the ducting and everything has been removed. But the condensers are the still con there? The condensers on the out outside yeah. are, yes, yeah, so oh, they're okay. on the side okay. of the yard. Right. And the fourth point he made was the applicant shall be prepared to discuss all proposed materials and the detailing of materials, including but not limited to siding, cladding, roofing, windows, doors, exterior stair stairs, and railings. Mm -hmm. So that which speaks to everybody's point about it being compatible to mm -hmm. the existing. Yes. Um, that's there. So you're going to use stucco on Correct. the exterior. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Um, so let's open it up for discussion then. What, we'll start with you, Mr. Giuliano. Um, overall, I like the massing of it a lot. I think mm. the previous edition was actually pretty clumsy, you yeah. know, with the telescoping <laughs> gables, and I think it made it look kind of weak. Um, mm. The columns are very thin. Um, it wasn't detailed very nicely. I think your edition just makes the whole building look a lot more cohesive and just a stronger right. L shape when you're looking at it from the back. Um, and then again, just to follow up on the materials, I think we like you know, confirmation that you'll be using real painted wood for the half timbering, um, stucco um, with the same texture as the front of the house, um, same roof shingles. Um, I think it's slate on there. Um, it's, uh, it's asphalt shingles. It's asphalt shingles. Oh, okay, yeah. just yeah. with the yeah. color yeah. variation more, more in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, windows, true or simulated divided lights with the muttons on the All exterior right. and the interior, you know, so that it matches with the original windows. Um, you know, real wood um, for the steps coming off uh, the, the door there. Um, you know, but no composite or anything like that. So, but overall, I think it's pretty strong um, and a nice addition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to add. Uh, I agree. Um, uh, with everything my colleague said, and um, very supportive. Um, I think uh, you've done a nice job overall. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. Uh, no other comments. Thank you. Nor I. I think it's a great. It'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. I'm highly supported. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think uh, it preserves. It, it surely preserves the house. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. additions, yeah. I think, are really not only in character, but add to the overall attractiveness of the house. I think it's a great design, a great project, and uh, we just only need to, we always like to get the details, and that's, that's really uh, our issue, but highly supportive. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, uh, I just have a question. Uh, when, are you working on the interior now? The, the the main body of the house um that's what we're still putting the plans together for oh uh, i just wondered your time plan. frame as to when you um yeah i want to get started so <laughs> yeah i mean i want i want to get started two months ago <laughs> yeah but, um, uh and i had mentioned ike that um we were just definitely looking forward to you know meeting with you on hpc making sure that we you know we really brought in uh an, a strong design and from this point i feel i mean like you know we're we're we have a good plan going and a lot of a lot of what we need is there it just the details and the addition is what's required and that's right. that's the part that i mean yeah i mean just due to the so due to the the shape of the lot that's really why we're here right it's a flag mm -hmm. shaped lot um otherwise doing the addition mm. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so we, uh, Tommy, we have everything then down. <coughs> Will they come back yeah. from revisions for materials? If you want them to. Yeah. I think, <laughs> we, <laughs> I think we put that in the recommendation, okay? okay? Which is just, you'll, you'll contact Tommy in the office, and okay. then you don't have to come back to the full commission. Oh, okay. It's, oh, okay. it's only two people, three people, and we can meet. 
on site. It'd be interesting to see oh, what's oh, going yeah. on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. More than welcome. Bring a hand. Yeah. Bring bring people. Bring people. <laughs> I'll, I'll take volunteers. There's a lot of work over there, but I'm excited. Okay. I'm excited. No, this this really is somewhat out of character. It's a after two separate applications to demolish, we have an application now to build, preserve, expand, mm. and really mm. bring it up mm. to uh, a really elegant level. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Um, all right, next we have the upgrades to fire station number three, which was a discussion. And Tommy, are you going to lead this? Uh, as, to as Tom is not here tonight. I, I have not reviewed these plans in detail, so if somebody else that has had a chance to review them in detail wants to provide a brief summary, that would be great. Well, this plan um, was um, Conley and Hickey put together the um, the plan, and it was voted on by I believe it was the council. It went out for bid. The council uh, voted on um, a, a contractor to uh, to already do it. So to, to already um, uh, start on it. I don't have I don't have it with me. What I did speak to Tom, and he said that all of the uh, uh, work will be done on the inside. The work that's on the outside is really the repointing of the uh, brickwork and the stonework. So, and, and there's no addition proposed yeah. to the exterior. Uh, so uh, I just took a stance that because it was a historic building um, and, and a firehouse. Uh, significant historic building that we should be able to at least review what the uh, proposed recommendation uh, what the proposed work would be on it well so we just had at our presentation uh, earlier for our um, educational uh, training that even repointing can change exactly. the character of a building so perhaps right. we should have some discussion on it well um, I uh, Conley and Hickey were responsible f uh, I think they, they recommended the contractors. Uh, I'm it went not up sure. for bid and then. But yeah, the contract is approved. So there's really not. So it's a matter of w Kathleen was the one that saw this on the agenda. I had no idea about this. It's a matter of the timing of catching it. Had it been caught earlier, maybe the comments that you guys make could have had maybe more of an effect. But since the contract is kind of already decided, I, well, I, I would, you I can would still imagine, make comments. But I would imagine that Conley and Hickey have written a spec right. for the work and for yeah. the mortar. So, I, of course, I'm assuming that <laughs> I, I, since they brought them in as the historic consultants on the job, that that would be typical to spec the appropriate mortar and the installation of it. So. I don't, and, you know, I feel and he may have a conflict in advising on it. Yeah, there, there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, so maybe, Tommy, is there a way that you could keep up to date with the work going on that maybe we could? Uh, I don't even know I, what entity. I don't know. Isn't there a triggering mechanism, though, when uh, an application no. like this goes through nothing? Not, not that I'm aware of, which is why so, I, didn't, I didn't know about it. Mm. I, do we actually have oh, jurisdiction to uh, uh, provide any input with respect to a municipal owned building? Yes, you, you can make comments. Excuse me? You can, you can make, make comments. comments yeah. You don't have a, in this case, it's not approval authority because it's not a local landmark. And the timing of the comments should be before the uh, contract is awarded to build? It, yeah, I mean, ideally, but I don't think that there's anything in the ordinance that specifies when the comments have to be made. You're the, you're the one that actually pointed the section of the ordinance out to me about the HPC commenting on historic properties in the township that are township projects. Right. Mm -hmm. but so it's, again, yeah, it's a matter of but my But my, 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 question, my question is, is uh, when do you, you don't know anything when the work will begin. I mean, it's been, the contract has been, the bid's gone out. Right. I, I can ask. I can ask probably the, the fire chief would probably know. Well, could you do that? And yeah. Then, and then I think it will be an after, you know, after the fact, perhaps. But 
um, at least when they start repointing, I mean, we should be able to go down and at least look at it and mm -hmm. make sure that the the color and the technique is uh, comparable to the way it was done. I can definitely pass that along. What, okay. what exactly would you like me to say? Can just to get a when, when is the start date essentially of the exterior improvements? Here's what I would I, say: If all they're doing is regrouting, they should do a grout sample. We go look at it, say yay, oh, nay, we're okay. done. Okay. That's it, right? That's yeah, they're sure. calling for a mock-up. And I think I would also communicate that okay. yeah, well, we, we presume it's going to be consistent with the historic character because they've selected a historic uh, architect of which we uh, have great confidence in. And nevertheless, with the overall mission of preserving the historic characters of all the buildings, mm -hmm. we would like to have the opportunity to look at it and uh, provide our input. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. I'll, I'll let the fire chief know and I'll keep you guys updated. Okay. Tommy, he's calling for a mock-up okay. sample of every yeah. repointing condition on sheet A5. Oh. So maybe oh, before okay. they start doing, I don't know when that's scheduled to be reviewed mm -hmm. for, but it'd be even better if we could look at the mock-up. You said sheet A5 has yeah, that detail? Yeah, there's three different details okay. for repointing types depending on the condition of the brick. And each one, you know, has a boilerplate note to provide a mock-up sample prior oh, okay, to the great. main work on the building. So the next point, we should look at those. We should look yeah. at those. Yeah, should, yeah. I'll I'll, uh, yeah. I'll coordinate with the the chief. Great. All right. Thanks, Nick, for pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. I don't know what happened to my copy. Um, and then we have the last thing on the agenda. Is and sorry, this would be sorry like the design review committee. Um. I guess that makes the most sense. Um, well, we have design review, we have minor application, and we have revisions. So I guess it's design review. Okay. Uh, the next thing we have is the Upper Montclair train station at 275 Bellevue. This one I can I can give a quick yeah, little overview. And uh, Janine, if you want to give maybe a brief summary of the 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 legal discussion we had about this while I get the plans up. Sure, I'd be happy to. The, um, and I, I say this in the context of a number of questions that have arisen uh, since I've been here, which is a pretty short period of time so far. But I, I've learned that every town uh, kind of has its personality, <coughs> and I've learned that the personality, or maybe it's just why you hired me, I don't know, but of Montclair <laughs> is, to start out with a question that's something like, do we, can we review this? Do we have oversight? Do we have jurisdiction? And so on and so forth. So I can tell you right now, my answer is gonna be yes, 99% of the time. Um, and the reason for that is because when I sent a long uh, legal analysis just by way of email to Tommy and uh, Kathleen, focusing on this, not because this was so important, this particular uh, application for a permit, but because I had been asked this long enough that I, I thought it deserved uh, some treatment. So we, we could send that around, I could put it in a formal letter, but um, um, preceding my doing that, which was just a few days ago, or maybe it was at the end of last week, I don't remember, um, we submitted, and, and by we, I mostly mean Tommy, um, submitted an OPA request to DOT and to New Jersey Transit. Uh, I wrote to the attorney uh, for the lessee. I did get a response and um, a response from Mr. Nuzzo, I believe it was, uh, and so on and so forth. So they were resisting review, but the bottom line is um, a, a permit that comes before the town uh, for anything, because that's what the municipal land use law says, permit. A permit that comes before the town for a property that's been designated or in the district or in Montclair in a potential district, I haven't uh, come across that before, but you have these four potential districts. Um, uh, the HPC has broad review authority mm. on permits. And so you have jurisdiction to review them, and they should be coming here. Um, and this, uh, this is a pretty new section, but in the book that we all read, that we all call Cox, but it's a GAN series 
uh, long, uh, you know, very well developed over the years treatise on the municipal land use law, including uh, cases and examples and sample forms and so on and so forth. Um, there's a, a new treatment of Section 111 of the Municipal Land Use Law, which is one of the five sections devoted solely to historic preservation commissions and, and commission law, and that is the section on the review of permits. So that's actually your broadest jurisdiction, the review of permits. Um, you're, as you know, you get referrals from the Zoning Board or Planning Board, uh, that's Section 110. Uh, that's advisory or it can be advisory. Sometimes that depends on whether you're strong or weak or anything, but that's not what I'm addressing tonight. Uh, but the bottom line is um, you have permit, um, broad permit review jurisdiction. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that was making sort of a mountain out of a molehill <laughs> because <laughs> this is uh, just about the outdoor seating uh, but since it came up in the context of the question to me of should we even be looking at this, there you have it. I want to address the actual outdoor seating. <laughs> That's not my <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or the railing, or you know, right. whatever. I'll, well, we I'll didn't. We didn't even really know what. I we mean, never got the lease, by the way. We did get the lease. We, oh, we did get it. I, yes. Oh, I, I sent it. Oh, I did. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I got it from Jersey. Tr or yeah, and JT. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I, I missed fine. that. <laughs> I sent it a couple of days. We just got it. Okay. Very so right. so okay. where are we? Does that mean that they... We, the HPC... So because it's a state-owned property, local zoning doesn't apply to it, which means they don't have to get certificates of appropriateness from you guys. So they're in a local historic district, so normally they would, but because it's state-owned, they don't need to. But they're still being referred because of the Section 111 for comment. So, so see, that's the tricky thing. And a lot of people think just because it's a superior um, entity, and it's particularly when it's a superior entity on their own property, so a state or county uh, property, because local zoning doesn't apply or doesn't necessarily apply, uh, depending on what's being proposed, that that includes us. And it actually doesn't. And Cox finally makes that clear. Mm. Um, so, like I said, I can write an opinion if you'd like me to, or something, or we could just recirculate the email. Um, but it all started out with we've been to SHPO, we don't have to come to see you, or you don't have authority unless it's in the lease with NJT, and you know all these other sort of boxes. But right. you know, that would be true if Section 111 weren't written as broadly as it is. But it is. And we, in the lease, we were getting to see if there was something built into the lease that said you do have to get a certificate of appropriateness. That was not in the lease. So it's it's just a referral for comment. And, so and then where does the tonight. referral go? Who does to whom does it go to? It goes to um, it goes to the owner and the applicant that filed the permit, and so they can do with it what they will. So what ex what is the nature of this permit? I'll, I'll explain. So that's. But that's Transit the is the owner, you said, Tom. Jersey Transit owns the property. The restaurant building is owned by another entity that has a long term lease with them. They own the building, you said? That in, wait. Long term lease on the building. They have a long term lease on the building. From Jersey Transit. Jersey Transit. Transit okay. Yes. But okay. it's New Jersey Transit owned. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go through. It's, it's really simple. It'll take me probably yeah. two minutes less to explain to you what they're proposing to do these oh. plans were these plans were done by Sionis um, originally we had thought that they did need to come before you so we had a full application submitted but then we withdrew it ourselves and we're refunding them um, but essentially all they're doing so there's um, there's an outdoor seating area on the I believe the south side of the building you're probably all very this is the upper Montclair train station to Novo restaurant um, and right now it essentially is just an open outdoor seating area with a roof over it and um, aluminum, black aluminum railings around the outside. So they've removed the aluminum railings and they have this plywood up currently because there was a stop work order, they didn't get permits. Um, plywood has been up for a long time now. And what they're proposing to do is install these seasonal glass panels to provide outdoor seating in all seasons that will be removed in the warmer seasons and put in place in the colder seasons. 
and then install another railing on the outside of the panels that basically matches exactly the railing that was there before. Um, and then the architect actually sent me a photo of the railings that had been removed. So these are these were the original railings that were removed, and they're basically proposing to install new railings that match exactly. Oh, they're new railings? Why are they not reusing these railings? B these were not, these were like aluminum railing. There, there were not, they weren't expensive railings. And I think it's probably to, they needed a specific type of railing to fit on the outside of these seasonal panels. The existing was aluminum, right? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. They're, they're proposing to replace it with the same. I noticed that this this is not um, heated, and there's there's there number of uh, you know heating elements. They're on the on the walls, and they're freestanding. I, I'm ju I'm just curious if that 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 was not included in this plan set. It's okay. it's just this is the only sheet in the whole plan set that was filed for permit. So it's really just for. The glass panels in the room. Does it require a planning board review right now? No. Can I see the? Because the heating, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on this. So the it, heating it's just, issue, right? it's just a regular building permit. Oh, okay. For just a regular building okay. permit. Yep. I guess I don't understand the elevation drawing. It looks like it's butt, butt glass, glass butted to each other. The Correct. So the one elevation there. Right. Yeah. There. This this is the south elevation. That looks like I see a single line, like there's glass budding to each other. Yeah. Right, there, and there's four individual panels between the columns. That have no metal surround. They're just glass budded to each other. I guess this is the detail of that feature. Well, that's not. What's this is the, this is the framing is. detail. What's that? This is the framing detail for the glass panels. For each glass panel? Or for the outside of the four butted together, I I don't know. I don't know. Can you do, can you butt that? that? That's a pretty long stance. I mean, it's got to be. Tall, how tall is that? I and guess, the, I guess if you you know you silicone it together somehow, it's Tommy, just it's just a it's about probably a safety feet. glass that they don't care whether it flexes a little bit or they're just trying to cut down wind. I'm, gu I'm guessing there's no presentation here trying to cut down wind or cold. So. That that horizontal line, Tommy, go down and then go to the left. See where the glass is, where it says that? Go to the left. What does that say? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. But and seal joints between panels. Wait, do the panels come So yeah, out the framing is only on the outside. Is, framing can you is read only that? We can, can, re, can you read yeah. that? Yeah, it's okay. So the, this one says glass storm window tip, typical butt and seal joints between panels, aligned joints with mullion slash railing posts. And then this detail that's pointing to this outer portion says painted metal framing, typical C detail at right. Is so are these removable? Is that the idea? They take them away and they they them remove away? them when it's warm. They warm. put them in when it's it. cold. So it's really just a glass enclosure, really. That's why they need all that heating stuff hanging around. Excuse me. Have they actually submitted an application for us to review? No, this no, is no just it's a building permit application. Okay. It's a building permit application. Just a building permit. But the issue was because it's in the local historic district and it's a fairly significant building no, no, that I know that I, 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 I'm just trying to so I don't think we I received any no it was there was a link on the application that had a link to these plans there was there was no report done or anything like that because no application was required I, I, I think we should actually receive something that we can look at I, maybe it's a little hard for me to I think that's I, what I'm looking at. Yeah, I, I, I can. T it's a an, it's a clear anodized aluminum frame with butt glass joined together. And it's a very modern. You know, if you were trying to do this in a historic modern, way, modern, not historic, it, modern, not historic, you would make each one of those panels framed like the wood windows mm. there and treat them like real old um, storms mm -hmm. that you'd set in there, and they would have the same character as the rest of the building. So this really has, is, you know, 
Up front, it looks like it's not historical. Yeah. But, but I think we should have something that we receive. Well, there what we there really what? Can you explain again? There wasn't because we because they're not required to file an application. We can't tell them they have to submit ten hard copies of the plans for the HPC to do an informal review. They have to submit like two copies or something like that to the building department. And the best so we can do is submit comments to New Jersey Transit, right? That's the best we can do. And New Jersey Transit can tell us we're going to, you know. Yeah, this, this will probably go to the the building, the restaurant owner, because they were the applicant. But the applicant, but that uh, doesn't have any any teeth to it, right? Anyway, There's no, yeah. I, I mean, their recommendations, they can take them or leave them. But they already they, bought all this material? I don't know. The permit has been sitting in our office for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so could we then um if if people well, i'm just throwing it out that john's comment that to make in order for it to be have an historic look to it it would be each of those four panels would be individually framed is that something that we can compose a letter to to the yeah i mean I'll, i'm going to put a memo together one way or another that will get sent to them. And then the bottom railing, is that open? Do these panels go all the way down to the floor, or is that? When I spoke to the architect, that was my understanding, that they're full height and that the railing is on the outside. And oh. the remail is probably oh. code, you know, crashing through these pan glass yeah. panels <laughs> to drop down to the lower level, it's probably a safety barrier. Well, first of all, they're not there all the time. They get taken away, right? So the, the, the railing will be permanent, yeah. When the glass panels aren't there. Right. It just stays there. Are they closing up the egress in, 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 from... No, from so the there, there actually is a door as well. Proposed. There is a door, okay. Yeah, that will line up with the panels. I don't even, I don't know if we got an elevation of that side. Where? Because I'm like, it should be right there. Like, it's on the side, it's on the side that faces the platform. The yeah, but the platform. yeah, but it's right, right there. Where's the, where's the Go entrance? Go to the plan up above. Yeah, what's? Uh, I, what's I'm not this? seeing it. No, Tommy. you might be right. Yeah, on. right. Where is it? Oh. Because well, I, I know, I know the, the site. Currently, right. you just walk right up the ramp, right. and it's open. But now it looks like it's completely enclosed. Well, that's another issue then. That oh, yeah. There we go. They're, they're just. So they're is that on the ramp? Through the open air, covered area, and down a ramp or something. Platform. So the so ramp, there's a door there, Tommy? Is yeah, that that's that my Is there a door? Let's see. Hold on one second. It's all open. But they want, to, they want to winterize it, so there needs oh, to be. Oh, yeah, I, don't I guess. I know what they want to do. They, they, I, I guess there is no door proposed. Yeah, it's just Please. all open there. I, I don't understand why. I guess because they figure, like John was saying, it cuts down on the wind, and they can have the heaters in there to heat it up yeah, better. Yeah. We'll heat it better than just open air. But what is the timing on this? got to provide some kind of input in it. I really ought to see it a little better than what we've seen. And we have to know what our time is to get back to what, well, you know I what our timing is. I'm going to draft this memo tomorrow and I'm going to send it to Kathleen to look over and make sure it captures everything that you guys said and she'll green light it and as soon as she does that I will send it to the owner and then I talked to Jeannie about this. I'm going to give them a chance to respond and say, okay, hold on, we're going to make some changes in response to these comments, or we're not going to make any changes, and then at that point we'll send the permit on. That's the only, that's the procedure. Right. So our comments then will be about the windows, the framing of the windows. Yeah, I mean, there's better ways to do it. They yeah. have, like, triple-hung windows where when they're down, it just looks like a window. And then in the summer, you know, restaurants downtown have them everywhere. All they the way up, they yeah. just yeah. fold all that's the a way great, up. That's a great idea. And you've already got a big roof overhang there, so mm, when it yeah. tucks up, yeah. it's not going to be protruding beyond the roof yeah. overhang. Mm. And then you could get the character of the, mm -hmm. other, the windows they on They could the have side. buttons on yeah. them if they want, or they could just be muttonless but at least it'll be more unitized with like a frame around it and it'll look more like a residential window so what, what do we call those sometimes they're just windows. double hung they're simulated double or triple hungs they look like a double hung window and they're down but there's a hinge where you would normally <coughs> go up with the sash and oh they, i see they okay. like retract upward like that into the ceiling okay 
Is, is, is there like a double hung retractable? Yeah, I could email you something tomorrow, just like a, a spec from a company. You know, sure. There's many could include a link them, in the memo. Yeah. And, and your comment was that each of the panels should have framing around it as one of the or possible. Just, just take a look at those windows. Just yeah. look at those windows yeah. that have a two over two. I can imagine it being two over three, where that goes down to the side. You know that they're individual panels that look like those windows. Simple as that. Just carry the character of those windows across and make them go down to the ground. We're not trying to design. I would just say what they're proposing is an aluminum anodized frame with butt glass is uh, the aluminum stays there on the outside. The glass, mm. I guess, goes away, but the aluminum is nothing to write home about. Mm. And the, the egress, the door? Or, or lack of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lack thereof. Well, maybe if there was a door, they wouldn't need six heating elements yeah, in there. I don't know. It, um, it, maybe they. Maybe it's too expensive to heat. Um, if they were to enclose it, and then they can't use those heaters, what is that the been, reason why? What have they been doing? I think uh, they've been rolling down shades or something, right? Is that this what they've been doing? Be, I just remember they've had the stand up, the stand ups, as uh, Chair mentioned, and then the ones on like attached to the side. I imagine. Um, is there any kind, if, if that were to be completely enclosed with a door, would there be some kind of code yeah, violation? Oh, that's, what I, that's the right, way that's I probably what it, but they get well, around. That's, what, that's building code will review. So they would that. get around that. No, I'm saying like, that's why there's probably no door, right? Like if, I, if I don't, I'm not sure from okay. a fire code standpoint, I don't know. Wait, okay. But if that is an issue, they'll, yeah. they'll catch that. Tommy, well, they're just called the fold-up windows. That's yeah. what name. The it's chicken and the egg. Sales, I mean, but it's a really good product. You don't put a door in, but um, you need to put in extra heating elements. I, it just I, I guess the heating, right, makes it, it... If it's enclosed like that with just the door open, I guess it's still easier to heat it during the colder months of, like, November or, you know, I maybe... You probably get one of those temporary vestibules if that was an issue. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I... I don't. They haven't been using it during the winter when it's really cold. In the fall, I mean, right? They're yeah, it's it. only when the temp, when the weather is sort of changeable. But yeah. does this make it a year round? That, I, that's what I, I don't right. understand. That's, I think that's the idea. The idea. Make it more I get usable. it, but wouldn't that? I mean, doesn't that add any kind of uh, parking requirement that the planning board should have to take a look at? You know, because it's right. year round. They're I mean, exempt. I guess because they're not. I mean, they can still currently use those seats. Um, now they're still exempt from site plan. They're so, still exempt from site yeah, plan. Yeah, they're still they're what? They're exempt from because it's they're exempt from the zoning oh, from oh. zoning. Oh, so from they don't. Zoning. Yeah. Okay. But we can comment on this, correct, Janine? Because yeah. section one one one. And this is the goes to New Jersey Transit is the owner. But this not will not the to, operator. No, I think this goes to the at least. The lessee. The lessee, the, lessee. The, re oh. the restaurant owner, I believe. And does, and does the building owner get a copy of it as well? We can send it to whoever we want. I, I would because yeah. it's their building and they're doing something right. that we would say is not really appropriate. So they yeah. should know that. I agree. And just real quick, Tommy, it says on there that the railings, they, it says they're reusing the railings, right? But you said they got oh, new ones, it? doesn't it? I thought I said, it's hard to see, but. Maybe go up. Well, the, this detail down here says decorative metal railing in front of glass panel. Match original railing. Pick it. Profiles. Match original. Match. And if you go up, did it say? I, I thought it said reuse. It says railing described no, below. No, go up to go up a little bit to the uh, proposed west elevation. Well, did the detail says railing described below? Oh, is, it, is that what it yeah. says? At least that's what it says at the very top of the screen. Because Can you roll up? Because I'm. I, I would like there. to just see that because I thought yeah. I saw it said reuse. No, am I wrong? Am I off base on that? It says existing porch post to remain, existing leaders to remain. Oh, the post to remain. Railing described below. None of it's historic because this was totally rebuilt. That's I'm all just trying to get a sense, right? And then, but they're and they're re 
they're I guess they're doing another aluminum. Uh, they're doing this fence there, right? They're railing doing there, yeah. railing, and then they're they're doing this anodized aluminum frame okay. behind the railing yeah. with butt glass. So, okay. it's, like, it's going to look like a bus stop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Tommy, I want. Well, let's put that in the report. It's going to look like a bus stop, so, not a train. Not a train. Not, not a train station. Not a train station. Not a train station. It's going to look like a bus stop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to put that in there? Yes, we did. I don't know if that's an insult to NJ too. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I would be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's the last thing on our agenda. Is there any other um, thing for discussion or no? All right. Well, motion to uh, adjourn, and we will see everyone on July thirteenth. Who's going to be adjourn. here? Motion to adjourn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, se second. Yeah. Well, this All is. All in favor? Is it, is it July 13th or July 21st? July 20th. 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 Wait, yes. The meeting. 20th. 20th. Okay. Sorry, I have, I have a. Yeah, we moved that one. Okay. All right. We had a discussion about that last time, right? <laughs> Correct. So our next. Oh, a while ago. Right. Our next, get, our next meeting is July 20th. All right. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? I hope so. Good night. Thank you, everybody. It's 945. Everyone.